goal! Yes, 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 yes! That was a goal! Striker! Eat that! Yeah. And another! Bing Bang sticking in! Thank you and good night! What? That was liquid football! Uh, shit! Did you see that? Hello, everybody. It's your old friends on Money and Madness, and uh, we're finally doing podcasts again. Hey! It's not very exciting. We don't really have an official title for this yet, but let's just assume it's going to be called something along the lines of a football podcast. Yeah. That's, we'll, we'll probably narrow that down. It'll there. have the words football and podcast in it. Yeah. Everything else, I think, is quite fluid up to that point, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, pretty much. Anyway. Or liquid. Ah. Oh, God. <laughs> Footcast. Yes. That's, <laughs> if you want to just get the dyslexics on board. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one's really cornering the dyslexic market. <laughs> or the martech, as I think it's called. Anyway. <laughs> Hot start. I mean, we have a lot to get through because it's been a fucking long time since the three of us actually came around to do a podcast. In case you don't know who we are, because you probably don't, I'm Jonathan, we have Neil over here, and we have Rachel. We've got two Arsenal fans and one Liverpool Woo! fan, so if this is completely unbiased and unfiltered, that'll explain why. It's quite balanced, because yes. essentially, we're the two chips on the shoulder. Yes, and I eat chips. Each shoulder. Yes. Yeah, you it's will. all about Yes. <laughs> and, uh, and I eat the chips, so yes. that's, how, that's how the balance comes from. So yeah, we have a lot to get through, so we're going to start off with kind of these kind of main talking points of whatever's on our mind, uh, the set pieces, because we're really mm-hmm. funny with our little segments, and... Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about the Women's World Cup, first of all, because really? that's the most recent thing that's on. It's actually, we're watching it as we're it's recording this. It's like on, now. Right now. We should actually watch, watch the football right now. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Stop listening to this, and then watch the... Yeah, anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> so, <laughs> how are we enjoying the Women's World Cup so far? It's been very good. Yeah, it's same It's been here. very good. Did you just ah, the, Brazilian, the, 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 the Brazilian team just walked, onto the, walked into the stadium there with a the ukulele. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> and the Scottish, Scottish national team do warm ups with rubber chickens. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I missed that actually. <laughs> How could you? How I'm, could not, you? I'm not. I'm not used to football teams having this much personality. It's exactly, completely alien yeah. to me. Yeah, the lack of brand awareness is really yeah. throwing me off. That's All the thing. This humanity. Like, yeah. Fuck it. Like, I'm used to seeing people walking with Burberry caps, not taking, fucking um, pictures. Oh, that's nice. Instant, instant. Oh yeah, cameras. they got the Polaroids. Actual Polaroid cameras. Holy shit. <laughs> And the, the coach is now walking around waving to the few fans that are already in the stadium. Mm. What do you <laughs> make of the whole? Yeah. What, what do you make of the whole ticket thing? Because obviously, because uh, by the time this comes out, you'll actually be in France, hopefully yes. watching a few yes, matches. Yes, yes. We're going to see three matches. Would you like to tell the people what matches you'll be going to see? Going to see Scotland, Argentina, which is the Parc de France in Paris. Nice. So PSG's home home venue. So excited to see that. Mm. Then the next day we're seeing Canada uh, versus Netherlands. That should actually be a cracking game. That yeah, would be a I'm good so game. I'm so looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be a brilliant game. Um, and then we have the round of 16, which unless USA tank it against Sweden, it'll be USA versus Spain. Hmm, interesting. So, Because um, you were worried that it was going to be USA-China, which was going to be just basically like attack versus defence. <laughs> it was like a stoke of... The yeah. World Cup so far is China. And believe me, that is not a compliment. <laughs> what a fucking slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it can't be any bad as USA Thailand anyway. Can yeah. it? In, in a sense, um, how many, what teams have kind of impressed us so far, do you think? Outside of. I mean, France have been pretty good, obviously. Host nation. Decent team, too, actually. Italy. Italy, who are going to be playing tonight, mm. um, are, have one of the been one of the ones that I had written off at the start because this is their first World Cup in a couple of World Cups. Yeah. Um, and their home league has been, like, they've been pumping money into that league and it hasn't really been broadcast across Europe as to how good those teams are doing. Yeah. But this the majority of the Italian team are made up of Florentina and Juventus players. Yeah. And Juventus won the league and Florentina did fairly well in the league. So it's kind of, it's showing that you know, I, I was very surprised with the Italian team as well because I yeah. remember watching the Australian game they had and obviously a lot of things have been made about the Australian team and like Sam Kerr being their kind of their main outlet as such and Gamma had her in her pocket the whole match yeah and that was the surprising thing is that like the, not only does the Italian team have like a game plan like you'd expect the Italian team if they're low on quality they at least have be tactically set up to defend and all that but they're not they've got 
fucking pace to burn. Like the wingers are fantastic. I don't remember the names offhand, but the the girl on the right hand side is just brilliant. Mm. Just cuts everything off, and she's actually a decent crosser of the ball as well. You know, it helps when you do have a bit of height in the team, I guess. But like I said, once you have someone that's able to run, like it, it opens the team up so. You could run so and cross a ball whilst also doing that running thing. Yeah, <laughs> in fact, the actually that that group itself, like Group C, has been really fucking competitive. Like by far oh, the oh, best group of the, of if the tournament. There is a permutation in this division, like in this mm. league, that they will all end up on the same six points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then it'll go to head to head. Yeah, and that's so, that's the fun part yeah, because you so would have practically beaten all of them, <laughs> eating each other basically. Uh, Saron, yeah, that's her. That's yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. But um, but yeah, like I suppose we had to go through the groups then to see how it goes because at the time of recording, A and B group A and B have been settled. So France and Norway have qualified that for Group A. That was kind of set in stone. Right? Not a surprise yeah. there. I no. mean, the, the actual game between those two were, was really, really good. I really mm. enjoyed that game. With the most bizarre own goal <laughs> of the World Cup. But I like one of the best players in the tournament as well. Like, yeah. Renard, Renard is such a fucking baller. Like, she's like six foot like six foot ten in comparison to like everyone else outside. Especially in the Korea game, where all of them were just like just midgets around her. <laughs> trying to like pull down this fucking Trojan horse of a player. And she didn't have to jump for the header. She just went like... <laughs> for like two of the goals it was amazing uh, like that Norway were kind of dead on to get through despite yeah. you know the, the big world class player of uh, yes the Hederberg thing uh, yeah, yeah, for anyone who's uninitiated, uninitiated the, the Ballon d'Or winner basically the first actually women's Ballon d'Or winner Ada Hederberg who is Norwegian is not playing for the Norwegian national team and to basically surmise it she's done a Roy Keane essentially <laughs> she's complained about facilities and uh training for training issues and various sort of like nitpicks stuff and there's just been a massive annex between her and the norwegian fa um, and they kind of went part ways to try and cover themselves kind of mm. saying like oh look we've made all these concessions like she asked us but i haven't actually uh she's been like quite quiet on the exact reasons as to why she fell out with them yeah but uh she suggested it's mental health based and that they don't look after them in that sort of sense Mm. and um she felt she was being disrespected so yeah all to her but they nor the norwegian team have not needed her no like, that's what i was surprised by they have plenty of firepower to work like with. caroline graham hansen um she has just been signed by barcelona mm. um and she has just kind of she's actually been leading the line really well like yeah. she hasn't actually been the now striker but she's been that link up between the midfield and the i've got to say she kind of plays in that pocket like the kind of number 10 and then the girls like utland i think it is mm. and i can't remember the other one either but um like I said, they, always, they always usually play with like two up front anyway, don't they? Mm. That's their system. So um, The Nigerian team was actually a good crack as well. Yeah, uh, you got Oshawala, who is... <laughs> um, they're good crack. Yes. Well, uh, they're, crack. <laughs> they're, they're, they're a great laugh. Mm. Oshawala, who can yeah. take on seven players whilst falling over and still beat them. <laughs> it, I mean, um, like, that gets you the Barcelona team, fair enough. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's pretty much like... I, defenders can't defend against her because even she doesn't know where the ball's going to go. No, it's just pure <laughs> and ultra chaos, completely. Uh, but it's fantastic. Like She played for Arsenal ladies <clears> for a while and she was that kind of frustrating figure up front where... She does everything right, like kind of yeah. a wobie, where it does everything right except finish. Yeah. She kicked her own foot more times than she kicked the ball when mm-hmm. trying to finish. That's why she. Thing. That's why she left. Um, she got sold from Liverpool as well. She mm. went from Liverpool to you guys, I think. Yeah. And like uh, we, they obviously the team took a massive gamble on her because she was scouted from obviously Nigeria, I assume. Uh, and just saw like oh this she just has no ball control <laughs> she's fast she can she like, has open like, definitely things up, she's like. improved but you can even see with the goal she scored against South Korea yeah that she fell over while <laughs> placing the ball absolute perfectly yes. into the net you're unsure whether or not she meant it or not <laughs> whether she was yeah. just trying to kick, stop herself from kicking her I was say, it, it wasn't necessarily a goal a good kick it was a good clipping error it just knocked <laughs> off her enough to go in. But like I said, Group A, I don't think was much of a contest. I mean, hopefully Nigeria might get through because they have like won, they've won one and drawn one, I think, haven't they? Um, so I'm not too sure actually if they would or not. But it depends on the way it works. There's only sixteen, there's only twenty four teams, so the top, the best four third place entries actually get through to the next round. Yeah. So I mean, I'd like to see them go through. They've only got three points though, so I don't know would they. I don't think they get away with that really, even no. with the goal difference they have. So. No, I don't, they, there is a slim chance, but not much of a yeah, chance. Yeah, that's it. It, it. It's one of those weird things about the groups. Um, Group B, then we hmm. had German. Yeah, no surprise there. Three wins out of three. They are the. They the are top on seeds. second gear. Second I haven't been very impressed with them. No, no. they've been playing. The, the team selections have been quite odd. Where yeah. as kind of, uh, apart from 
Marijan, whose foot uh, is broken. Yeah, that's a match massive, China. massive blow. Um, you can understand why she's not playing, obviously. Mm. But um, like other than Pop and a couple of others that you you know some of the nailed on starters you would have said at the start. Yeah. Aren't playing. And I think the defense had a few errors the other night. They don't. They don't look that strong. Like even the game against China, like they, they basically got away with it in a way. Like there China defended quite bizarre well. Bizarre errors where they let the ball bounce. I, remember, I think Louise Quinn <coughs> for RTE was saying if Emma Byrne mm. had been behind her and Louise Quinn had done that, she would have not like been able to sit. That was the main take in the team bus on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, the main takeaway from that was the fact that they're in Germany in the same group as we are for the European qualifiers. And yeah. a lot of the girls, like, doing the, the punditry are going, yeah, we could probably take these fuckers because yeah. they don't seem to, they don't seem to have a very soft centre, which is surprising for a German yeah, team. Yeah, I think the, the thing is they are a team in transition. I think a lot of people have been saying that, mm. that they have been there, thereabouts the last few years. They've won Euros, back-to-back Euros. They've won World Cups. They they um, have gotten to the semi-finals, yeah. the quarter-finals. Like, they are very strong contenders. And they will, even despite the fact that they're in second and third gear now, still have another gear or two to go up. They yeah. have the other players to come through. Uh, Marijan might be back for the later stages if mm. they can, if can get her. there. Yeah. So They've also they been chopping and changing really, coaches as well, which doesn't help. At I think the minute, they're, yeah. they're fairly happy with uh, von Stecklenburg. Stecklenburg, yeah. Um, so she's kind of a hero to the nation mm. of women's football. So hopefully she can kind of... Get them through. Well, see, they, the last like, match was a stroll, wasn't it? It was a South Africa game, was it? Yeah. I just wonder was that a bit flattering, maybe. Yeah. That's that's what that was my kind of my thought. And like the South African team just were were pretty much done after the Spain game, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. but they ended up with seven shots on target. Yeah. Um, after the first half of South Africa having one shot on target, they ended up having seven shots by the end of the match, which mm. just shows in the second half they allowed six chances that if <coughs> South Africa had been the likes of the USA, they yeah. would have been punished. That's the yeah. thing, Like once they come up against a team with actual quality, they really yeah. will get exposed. The Netherlands. Potentially, yeah. But yeah, Medema yeah. will eat them. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, in terms of Group B, it's likely we'll get Spain and China qualifying from that group because yeah. they're both on three points. Um, like the China team we've, we mentioned earlier on, very much the uh, the mega stone. Four stoke. points now because they drew last night. You're right, actually. Yeah, four points. So either way, like they still got they both of them got four points, so they'll both qualify likely from the group. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't really want to face China, I guess, but you you probably if you have at least one player of good quality, you'll get through those defenses either way because they don't seem to. The thing attack is, they are much. the they are the stoke. They don't attack football wise. They attack physically. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, like, very much like so. The Germans like the first opening game with Group B was. Like they the just Germans, got not lumped, at, lumped out of each other. Yeah. yeah, being you know hit by a wall, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah, the Great Wall of China. Yeah. Yeah, but um, <laughs> Spain have kind of been there or thereabouts. They've been okay. I, I think it's the same issue with like Germany is that like the ingredients are there, but they just haven't quite got this the 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 mixture right for mm, me. I like, agree. Yeah, because they, they they seem to have a lot of flair attacking wise, but their final pass and their shooting has been terrible. Yeah, Hermoso and Garcia last night in the the China match. Very bad. Where their shooting was atrocious. You could only assume that they were trying to <laughs> try not to try not to so play America. They didn't get <laughs> second place, which means that they play yeah. America in the round of sixteen. Yeah, I don't blame them. In fairness. At one point, yeah, at one point, I doubt any one of them, if they'd have fallen over, would have hit the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, no, no, don't give me the penalty. Yeah. That okay, fine, I'll miss it. Um, <laughs> no, like, so they fall over and they wind up in the stand. Yeah, like definitely. Uh, <laughs> group C, then, we were mentioning, uh, playing tonight, actually, as we're recording, so we might give updates as this goes on. Um, Italy and Brazil, essentially, I guess, could qualify. Like, as you're saying, pretty much three teams will probably qualify from this group, and rightfully so. There's yep. the three, some of the three really strong teams in this group, but Italy has been a surprise, considering yeah. how, and how, how low they really receded. good football They've done really well. Uh, I've enjoyed watching them and they've been the surprise of the tournament. Probably. Definitely, yeah. Same. Um, the Brazil and Australia game, I think, is probably the best game of the tournament so far, just for drama alone. Yeah. Because it's just nothing but like sweet, delicious VAR scandals. Because, that's the, again, it's the same thing with the World Cup, like the last World Cup. For me, the Matildas have been my surprise kind of team. I didn't think they'd go anywhere. 
They do have good players in yeah, this. They're very good yeah. players, but it's not poor. It's not a good setup, though. No, no, their the right. coach left in March, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> walked out, and they kind of hastily got uh, Milovic, or I think that's uh, Milovic. Yeah. Sorry for bad pronunciation there, but um, and he was kind of just kind of handed the job, kind of go here, go, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> here, take this and leave. Um, and they, they uh, are, they have a solid defense and mm. they've got a good attack, but their midfield will be their weak spot. So if yeah. teams have a strong mid- coming up against, the they could just hold the midfield. Yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, you put five across the middle, you got it. Yeah. Maybe it's me as well. I don't feel like that because uh, obviously their their star player is Sam Kerr, who's lighting it up in America. She hasn't really shown up just yet. Now she did cause a bit of trouble with Brazil in terms of like Brazil had to actually mark her. And as we found out, uh, if you ask a Brazilian team to mark people, you're basically asking them to submit, commit seppuku, apparently. Because <laughs> um, that didn't go well at all. But even still, like she did cause at least a little bit of trouble. She just needs like goals, essentially. She just needs to start performing, in a way. Because mm-hmm. she she'd be in the shop window to, to join a massive European team, like you know, to join the likes of Leon's or Barcelona's. Or <laughs> even the she she did tweet... Yeah. Um, <laughs> She tweeted at the Champions League final, mm. uh, which was 6 1 to Lyon versus Barcelona. Yes. Uh, Barcelona, massacre. they being their kind of first year of actually challenging in the Champions League to get to the final, it was kind of a surprise. It was kind of like the Ajax of yeah. the Champions League and the men's. It was kind of like, oh, they're doing well, that's weird. And then, oh shit, they're in the final. Yeah. So it was kind of like a surprise thing, and getting to the final was their final. Mm. And then when it was 6-1, it's quite embarrassing, and she tweeted about that, and then got a lot of sticks in. If you, you know, if you think it's so easy playing against them, why don't you come over to Europe? And mm. she kind of had like a winky face emoji. <laughs> Challenge kinda accepted. Like, oh. Yeah. So, um. Well, at this point, like, the, this is the opportunity to show how good you actually are. Yeah, she's on know. the world stage now. She yeah. should be doing it now. Absolutely, so, yeah. Um, well, like I said, you never know. Up against uh, Italy today, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, Jamaica were there. I think it's fair to say. they. A lot of people enjoyed them. They showed a lot of moxie, but just the quality wasn't there, I suppose, was it? No, the, their first time ever qualifying mm. for a World Cup, they are partially funded by Bob Marley's daughter. Which is great, by which the way. Which is just a yeah, fantastic story great. in itself. Yeah. Um, and uh, Buddy Shaw was kind of expected to kind of, hey, look, you know, this great bear we have. Yeah. He just hasn't kind of... It's been the same story, really, with like her, isn't it? Just like the, the expectations of seeing how good this player is just hasn't quite paid yeah, off. Yeah, I think teams, because there was so much hype about that one player, were like, okay, well, this, she's obviously shit off, let's mark, mm. let's mark mm. her and not let her touch the ball. And it's worked. Yeah. So, you know, something well, changed. Unfortunately, the rest of the team aren't, that, aren't good enough to capitalise. Somebody being double marked... Mm. Somewhere else, going, yeah. Well, they're clearly a man down somewhere, yeah. You know, pull yeah, the de- pull the defense. Apart. That, that's the one thing about watching the-, the corner flag. Get up here, <laughs> <laughs> like, you, like you can tell the deficiencies from each of each team at this kind of level, like mm. in, in at the world cup. But yeah. it's kind of fun in a way because they both have their strengths and weaknesses, so it makes for very open games, in my opinion, yeah. Right, Group D. Um, I'm sorry to say that, uh, breaking news, football is coming home because England has qualified for the next round. Um, so look forward to basically two weeks of memes and getting knocked out of the semi-finals against Croatia. Woo-hoo. Wait, Croatia isn't in this. Shit, they're going to win. <laughs> Fuck, that makes complete sense. Um, they've been better than I thought they were going to be. My hot take before the World Cup was because I have absolutely zero confidence in Phil Neville as a coach <laughs> and as a human being, <laughs> was that they were never going to go anywhere. But they've actually done all right. Despite, by virtue, by virtue despite of the fact that they've the squad. Neville, Despite Phil Neville, exactly. They have done, they've done well. Um, look, his team selection has been under question since he's become coach for England. Mm. He's got a serious amount of choice in yeah. pretty much all the positions. There's not a whole lot of positions, maybe holding midfield, where Jill Scott is kind of nailed on for that. Yeah. That he, or, and Steph Houghton in centre-back. The rest of the team... Picks itself, really, isn't it? Well, you, no. depending on who you support, toss, you'd pick yeah. a different uh, yeah. team. But he seems to not leave Manchester for any of his going to watch the FAWSL matches mm. where a lot of these players play. And that has kind of, you know, any of the northern teams have got a lot of players in the team. A lot like the Chelsea's, Arsenal uh, squads have kind of not been picked so far as. Hmm. Uh, Fran Kirby despite the fact that Ar- the Ar- Arsenal won the Women's Premier League yeah uh, Leah Williamson as centre back um, conceded the fewest goals in the league and still hasn't played hasn't and she? still hasn't even yeah. got minutes yeah. and Mental. when Millie Bright got injured against Scotland after hmm. tackling herself trying to take out Aaron Cuthbert um, 
it was kind of like, oh, well, Leah Williamson's going to have to come on here. And no, they brought on McManus, who plays for Man City. Um, like, I, He's there. She's there. <laughs> and she was at fault for the Scotland goal that got them back in. Well, yeah. got them back into it. They didn't win in, in the end. But yeah, it's a very weird selection and they haven't clicked well because you can't expect a team that's been jostled around yeah, as much. It still he like hasn't a put out the same starting eleven in a row uh, mm. like in the last at least yeah. five matches. And it's very hard to get a team jam together. Like I think as a group, like the players are phenomenal individually. Yeah. Um, that's what's getting them through is actual individual class. Like the pass from Bet Mead, okay, I know she has been playing, but she is a Northern player. Mm-hmm. Like she is <laughs> a Manchester United fan. Yeah. Um she uh her cross was brilliant, uh, to Jody Taylor, but they had like they both played for Arsenal, so they had that kind of connection. Mm. Whereas I don't think Mead played very well Ellen White. Yeah. Um so it was just kinda like you need to find like teammates that work well together. Mm. Um I think he just hasn't found that mix. I think if he does find that starting eleven he, he, they can do really well yeah because like I said it's, it, I think in terms of it's the squads that's definitely with the, the squad with the, perhaps the most depth outside maybe the American squad yeah. or perhaps the French squad it definitely depth is absolutely there mm-hmm. you know they're not relying on one or two teams but it's the same with the England, England team in the men's they'll re- just rely on one or two players and you don't really ha- need to you know you don't have to put all your fucking hopes at the Pickford, Maguire and Kane there are other players other English players are available you know, <laughs> you know if you want them I'm just saying um, <clears throat> this uh, it's also kind of curious with this group because Japan's qualified as well, which is not really a surprise. They're a pretty a decent outfit, let's say. Might, maybe not contenders to win, but definitely like last sixteen quarters. They won level. it in two thousand eleven, and they got to the final in two thousand and fifteen. Mm. And it was kind of expected that they would be one of the top teams to get to the final into the final ter- like final yeah. uh, semi finals even. But they have not played well at all. No. Uh, they've gotten through, or they ha- they haven't qualified. Yeah, they have qualified, haven't they? They have qualified because yeah. they beat Scotland. Um, they, but they have like it's, they haven't done it with any flair. No. Um, Scotland being absolute flair. This is football. <laughs> Kick it in the goal. <laughs> or whatever the Japanese <laughs> is for that. You know, you have to translate. <laughs> They just do it no, with like. They were known for passing. They were like the Barcelona, <clears throat> uh, like tic tac passing in the last two World Cups. But they, there's been nothing like that. Now they've gone um, full Mourinho apparently. <laughs> um, well, but Scotland and Argentina yeah. are debutants in the World Cup, so they were kind of just hoping to cause yeah. hassle. Really, but they've been very. Sorry, deb- Argentina weren't our debutants. <laughs> yeah. They, uh, they were there before last time, and they got hammered with the previous world record yes. of World Cup defeat. I will say their their goal difference is looking a lot better than the last one a few they, couple they, of years ago. Their opening game against Japan was like, yeah, they celebrated that nil nil like they'd won the fucking tournament. Mick yeah. McCarthy would be proud. Yeah. <laughs> that's again, that's not a compliment. <laughs> that's absolutely not a compliment. Well, in fairness, when you consider where the Argentine, and I'll get into this slightly more because we do have a, a set piece specifically for it. Yeah, say chance. Um. Like the fact that they're even here is considering that the team did not exist. Yeah. Uh, about a year and a half ago or so, um, they were registered as unrated by FIFA because they went the entirety of twenty fifteen to twenty to the end of twenty seventeen without having played any games. Mm. The coach was just promptly f- sacked and not replaced. And he's their coach. There, that's the same coach. They just sacked him. Yeah. He came back. He brought back, and no one likes him apparently. You know? Yeah. It's very very controversial. Um. Yeah, no, it's just like Argentina are my kind of like happy little underdog story. I love them. Mm. You know, the, like, I don't know. We all like overcoming adversity or some shit like that. Well, it's that. intriguing because it's between, <laughs> because like, it's essentially a playoff between them and Scotland to see who might get through to the next stage. Yeah, if, they, if they, Argentina if, would have a better chance, but Scotland would need you know, to win just to have a chance. Yeah, you if, know? They, if, they, if Argentina get through, I'll dance a fucking jig. You there know? you go. Well, uh, that, I, that's I, an incentive for Argentina, I would isn't absolutely it? Absolutely fucking love it if they yeah. get. I fucking love it. You look, you go full key. You know, get the get the money. I mean, it, it, it's just, it's saying something like that. You know, a women's team coming from a country where attitudes toward women are based back in the nineteen twenties. That's being that's being quite uh, being optimistic. Quite, quite optimistic. <laughs> yeah. You know, it always says something like, you know, I really really hope that they do go far. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just hope that this spurs it on and improves it. Sure, even only eight of the team are even professionals. Yeah, exactly. And they're playing in a different country. Mm. Yeah. 
to which, the, which has been an issue overall with South American teams, even in the men's side. Like they just there's such a disillusion with some of those teams because they're not playing in South America now. They don't feel like it's their teams or whatever. Mm. Anyway, um, let's move on to Group B then. Um, this has been a fun group as well, actually. Netherlands, Canada, Cameroon, and New Zealand. This was my group of death when I mm. saw the. Group I can see team. why, you know. Um, Canada being um, a big name in women's football, you've got yeah. Christine Sinclair, who is four off Abby Wambach's all-time international goal record, mm. which she has kind of come into the competition to beat that record, and <laughs> still four um, goals off it. Um, but Canada have been good. They've been good, not fantastic. Again, it's a... I think it's more of a... It's like you were saying about Germany and that. It's more of a case that... It's not a case that they're playing below their level it's just a case of playing at just the right level that they need to win yeah, yeah. and then they'll shift up I, I, yeah, put, exactly. I put the Netherlands in that category as well yeah, because exactly. for the, I think even the first game they had against New Zealand they were just huffing and puffing for so long and their passing was like really poor but then suddenly everything kind of clicked for like a couple of ten, ten, five ten minutes and got what needed done <laughs> exactly. and then back in the second gear what, what, what needs to get done is you need to get the ball to Bedima yes <laughs> <laughs> she's been fantastic it. by the way I yeah. can see why I can see why Arsenal fans are just purring over because she's so fucking good at yeah. just, I, just so, being a striker. I, I said it she's so calm yeah. and composed. Like the rest of the Dutch team were actually getting quite agitated. Like, Especially the wingers. The wingers were really over. Van de Sanden and uh, Martins, Martins um, were d- put, pinging in crosses way too quickly. Yeah. Mm. And Medema is very much like pull it back. Give her time to kind of twist and you know deceive, like she can shoot with either foot. Yeah, mm. just basically do the Arsenal thing, the cut back. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, what, like, you know. like what we, what the women team in Arsenal have, they've got Katie McCabe and they've got either Beth Mead or Lisa Evans, um, and they constantly switch wings. But the whole idea is that they bomb forward mm. nearly to the end line and then hit it back cut to Medina, yeah. and that's how she's gotten twenty two of her twenty two goals. Like you're not, but a majority of her twenty two goals. Yeah, the men's team trained year. exactly the same way in the. Actually, one of the tra- I remember reading in one of the training games, a player stands at that kind of byline, mm. and goals don't count unless the assist comes from that player. Oh, okay. Yeah. And that's how they train them in. Yeah. So you have you have to run and cut it back, otherwise then the goal won't count. Yeah. I, I reckon that they do the same. I reckon Montemayor does the same thing. With and the they like the constant yeah. switching, but yeah. Mertens and Van der Sande, I think switched once in the match, and then yeah. like that lasted all of three minutes. And then Van der Sande was like, "No, I want to go back on the left. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back on Don't the right." Don't be back in the box. Um, but yeah, um, but it was purely a case of they were panicking and pinging it in, yeah. and she was like, "Relax." And then in the end, Jill Rood came on and scored a fantastic mm. goal to. Mm win it but. yeah and like I said and the Canadian the Cameroon team they were a bit of crack as well um, they danced onto the field for their first match that was yeah. pretty cool you know yeah, that was you, know, you can't say many teams do that I mean I don't think Sheffield United will be doing that next season yeah. uh, unless they do it with Saudi Arabians and Scimitars but uh, yeah, uh, no, they might get set on fire as know, on the way out could be it depends well, if, they that, get, that, if they get relegated or not that, that could that, be a, that might count the stats yeah <laughs> <laughs> But um, but yeah, like I said, this was this gl- this uh, group is kind of a formality in the end. Uh, but uh, it's just between Netherlands and Canada for what, first what place. What I now. like about the New Zealand team is that um, they are consistently qualifying for the World Cup, but yeah. not really progressing. Yeah, they haven't won a game in the World Cup. Yeah, which is bizarre because you look at the team and they're not terrible. No, they're good. Um, they're actually really like their their striker um, Giorgio is really good. Yeah, but she's, she's actually been Gregorius. one of the better performers. Gregorius, sorry. Yeah. I was thinking of someone else there, but um, but no, she's really good, and she's tried fucking so hard because she's playing on her own. She's basically like a, like a Shane Long situation, yeah. Where she's just getting balls pinged to her, and she's chasing after him. But she's actually quite good at that. It's just yeah. that it hasn't paid off for her, and she was so close to scoring against Canada as well, which is even more excruciating. Um, but yeah, like the, this group was kind of formality. It was quite, a, quite a fun, yeah. and I'm excited to see Canada versus Netherlands. Mm. Nice. Yeah, it's gonna be great. That's gonna be a good one. Yeah, I'll be wearing my Arsenal jersey, my uh, mint. Arsenal jersey, so keep an eye out. Yeah, we'll, we'll try and spot for you on TG4. <laughs> so refuse to call them TG Car. And you should be the one getting all the drinks thrown at her. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of the stadium, you fucking bum. Yeah. Uh, finish off then with group, we'll finish off with Group F then which is uh, not much to say really United States have qualified with a goal difference of 16 and I'm not sure how they got that um, <laughs> and uh, Sweden qualified with them as well so. no it's 16 only because Enger stopped every other shot that goalkeeper is absolutely brilliant She does she play for in Europe or something yeah she plays for PSG ah yeah that makes complete sense because like you can just see like the she difference is in the, the team I think is she the only professional player 
for Chile. Yeah, I think so. Uh, or one of the few, but um, yeah, she plays for PSG. But you can even tell the difference between the team because the rest of the team are so disorganized. But uh, as you were saying uh, before we started, like there's an actual story as to why that team is so disorganized because they've been hastily, hastily fucking put together and they have no time. They've had no games to practice. Yeah, they, they haven't, haven't played playing. a match yeah. in nine over nine hundred days. That's insane. <laughs> Absolutely, and and yet to, again, the Chilean FA um, refused to pay uh, to host another team. Like teams were offering to pay friendlies, mm-hmm. and the Chilean FA refused to pay for a stadium for the evening or whatever. Nuts, absolutely nuts. Well, it's it's a common kind of thing, <laughs> a common kind of theme. Like the again, I'll we'll get onto this, but the Argentine FA have only just recently dropped. Like a lot of teams in South America charge like women to play yeah. for yeah. them like if you want to play for that team you have to pay money to do pay that. into it yeah <laughs> you know it's nice and it's it's, it's shocking like. I, I think um, what needs to be remembered as well is that the Irish team in 2017 had a strike because of similar like <coughs> yeah exactly yeah, like, similar yeah, like, if anybody like, thinks this is like European shit yeah. on South American you know uh, <laughs> this, misogyny and bigotry uh, no, it's we, just live in, we live in misogyny. Ireland. So <laughs> we, we live in Ireland, so we kind of own that. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> we wrote a book on that. Absolutely, Sonny. nobody treats their women's team well. Very few people treat their women's team as badly as we yeah. do. We just have a pop up book, and it's just the same thing. The yeah. quiet man comes yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so. yeah no, it's kind of run of the mill groupie. Um, yeah. I'm looking forward to the next round of games. Yes, um, when they get the big teams in. And yeah, like um, it's been good. It's what has been really enjoyable about this is that the underdog teams have not apart from thailand yeah have not been complete underdogs that's the one thing i've noticed is that the quality of the football from those teams has been so much better than the last year because I, I, I remember watching last year's stuff and like teams like the ivory coast for example which i believe were in last year honestly mis- misremembering and they do something really cool like run down the wing and they forgot the ball you know what I mean? Yeah. Like so really simple stuff like that. But with the coaching, you see, is is getting better, even with the amateur sides. Look, uh, Scotland's a good example. Like they have yeah. a few good players, and the rest of them are kind of semi-professional. But they still got there, but by, by virtue of the fact that they have really good, solid players to start off with, and the players that are behind them are well coached enough to yeah. get there. Yeah. I know they have. I know Celtic have a decent, are starting to build a decent women's team now as well. Yeah, they've got Glasgow help. City, who are semi-professional. Yeah. Who uh, will be the main Scottish club? Um, Hibs would have been in the past but mm. have kind of dropped off the pace after selling Kim Little we're like oh our job is done here because <laughs> we made our money off yeah. you pop lads mm-hmm. uh, but yeah um, also it doesn't help when you leave like yeah I'm going to keep going on a bit it doesn't help when you leave like a Premier League winning defender at home you don't seem uh, salty about it at all no not salty Emma Mitchell though. should be playing for Scotland yeah, Pretty. totally. I mean, just that's go. your takeaway from this podcast. <laughs> go now, walk up to Glasgow. Even just for the bants. <laughs> the hashtag. Is no one thinking so about the banter? With the rubber chicken. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, to go back on that, that was a warm up that Scotland did for the media. Okay. Um, in a, an open training session, warm up before England match. They you had, you uh, have to show me this after the podcast because I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> like, I still don't. You can say whatever you want. I will not believe you until I see it. So, anyway. So, next set piece. Yes. Our, slightly attached to this. <laughs> As we see, an Italian fullback wipe out one of the Brazilian forwards. And I literally, time tackle. And I literally do what you wipe out. Sure, there. <laughs> Have some of that. Have some of fucking that. Anyway, so our next set piece, um, brand new segment-ish, because it's something we did beforehand, but now we have a name for it. This is The Crystal Football. Ooh. You have to imagine that I'm going to splice in the Crystal Maze music here. <laughs> it's the closest thing I have, so. Dun, you know. dun, dun, dun. Exactly. tokens for cash yeah <laughs> pretty much or one of us is suddenly those balls yeah. which is kind of we're halfway there <laughs> but this one's really simple we are just going to predict something and uh, in the full knowledge that we're probably going to be wrong yeah yep. so simply who's going to win the Women's World Cup who do I think will win or who do I hope wins it who do you think wins the Women's World Cup we're uh, thinking purely uh, analytical here Neil I yeah. want you to rope that crystal football of yours and tell me what team do you see in it uh, America Rachel I 
have money on Netherlands winning it. See, that's who I hope wins it. Yes. Um, but that I am aware that France would be the favourites to win. So I think France will do it. Interesting. Um, I'm torn myself between America and France. I can't see past America at the minute. Like I just really want Bernard to lift the trophy and just stoically <laughs> no, not she, smile. Yeah, she just has to go. <laughs> <laughs> And she's half lifting, expecting you to punt it into the crowd. She'll hold yeah. it like at midriff level for herself, but it'll still be everyone else reaching up to grab <laughs> it. Say, no, she'll just, she'll just go full Great Kali, basically. Just hold yeah. it upside down. <laughs> Send it back to her own kind. But um, yeah, like I can't... I think it's it could be by the fact that that's, uh, it's an easy group as well, but just the way America have been playing, they just they have been the best team, in mm. my opinion. Yeah, We'll see what they're like against Sweden. Yeah. We'll see what they're like in the next rounds. I think France had a pretty poor game against Nigeria, which might be kind of miscalibrating me a little bit because I haven't seen America play a bad game yet. You know, yeah. see that that's 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 what's wonderful for me. In that it's not just that oh they're the only great team. There's lots of really great teams. Yeah, lots of but they've been flawless. Stunning, stunning, yeah. player, stunning players. America don't even have well in some regards. They do have some of the best players. Yeah, they don't have all of them. But they're the only team, the only great one of the great teams that have showed up, switched on. Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. Straight away. You know. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong, I think in terms of the prize package, Italy definitely, I'd say, will go far. Yeah. Based on how they've been doing. I still say Netherlands could easily make finals. Um, oh, definitely, yeah. France would definitely make finals. I mean, it's it's there's a, it's a toss-up between like four teams for me, but America, I just can't see past them. Yeah. There, has, there has to be theirs. I, I do hope, what I was saying earlier, I do hope the Netherlands win it. Yeah. Um, purely because Medema really does deserve that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And but the thing when you've got a player of just her unbelievable skill and quality, you really can make anything happen. Oh yeah. Anyway, that's us. That's our talk about the women's World Cup. Uh, whenever we, if you ever do do a podcast, we'll definitely review the World Cup because oh, it's, been, it's been really good so far, and I'm really been enjoying it. Actually, yeah. This this Italy Brazil match where we're eight minutes in as of this recording. And it's really good stuff so far. They're kicking the fucking shit out of each other. It's brilliant. But we and are it's a change. fairly full stadium. It's packed. It? Yeah. I was about to say it's absolutely jammered. Mm. It's, it's always nice to see, isn't it? Yeah, that's great. So, uh, let's change tack then and talk about men for a while. Um, I say a while, rest of the podcast, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because there's no men's World Cup. <laughs> but seriously, why isn't there a men's World Cup? Well, why why, why isn't there a men's World Cup? Where is it? Come on, fuck. Where's, where's football coming home? Get this shit rammed down my fucking throat. <laughs> anyway, set piece time. It is. <laughs> set piece time is. We're talking about the Champions League. <laughs> This isn't just going to be about 10, 15 minutes of me just waffling around. <laughs> I want to know what you guys thought of the Champions League first. Okay. I think... Can I go first? Yes, please do. The pizza we ate while eat, watching it was really good. Yes. That is slightly unrelated to what we're talking about, though. But that's all I remember about it. That is the <laughs> issue. <laughs> that is the issue. I, 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 that is a problem. I get that. But we're talking about the Champions League as a whole. Oh, uh, well, VAR. Yeah. Yeah. Again, another... another Kind of a problem generally, I suppose, but I don't even would you even call it a problem. It's just been the use of it sometimes. <laughs> just some of the calls have been a little bit iffy, but they've been they've been. It's, it's the reinforcement of the kind of ball to hand rule rather than hand to ball rule. Yeah, and that's the issue. I yeah, like that was gifted as a penalty to Liverpool, mm. and the game just never recovered. As an Arsenal supporter, I was about to. I was about, sorry, no, no, I you know didn't expect anything more from Tottenham yeah. tend to bottle it and to put their heads down and just try and get Harry Kane <laughs> to score and do some magic and yeah, he's half crocked just by the fact that yeah, he was like not he even, was probably, so about 50, for, probably about 50% going into that game uh, what I love right and funnily enough no right we're Arsenal fans so let's not sit in the fence it was a 100% penalty Stonewall penalty <laughs> I actually think he should have been sent off <laughs> For being Musa Suzuko, which, is, which is an offence in the Not itself. only that, but like what they do with horses who lame themselves, <laughs> he should have been taken out back, 
put in the tent <laughs> and shot in the teeth. I mean, I, I, I'd accept that. 110% penalty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Neil. Again, I, I told you we are going to get a completely unbiased view here, but uh, but yeah, like I said... Um, I'm sorry, look, the, the, our build-up, right? Personally, our build-up was just two weeks of me telling you going about a week or so well, yes. no it was, no, it was but two was, it was, it was two three weeks, weeks of me telling you you have to win you yeah. cannot lose this game you must not lose this this was the game. funniest thing for me because just a reminder like you guys were in the Europa League final right now let, well, we I might we that. might and might not talk about that, that but <laughs> you guys had your own competition to compete for I didn't get pizza for. during that one no yeah. you didn't there's no pizza for no, that no you're, you're just in despair for most of it yeah. um, I don't know I'm quite used to the taste of that when I'm so fun yeah, well, that goes without saying, really. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. But as, as I was saying, like, kind of you, you, the issue really was that it was actually more important for you guys, for, for Spurs, not to win the Champions League than it was for you to win the Europa, Europa League. No, that was, it was, it it, was, that's what it came across like. It was heightened by the fact that we didn't win the Europa League. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. That could have been it. Yeah. It would have been interesting now if both us and Spurs won it. It would have mm. been terrible. It would have been horrible. But it would have been funny seeing the Istanbul Super Cup being a North London derby. It's <laughs> <laughs> Liverpool Chelsea at the minute, so fucking woo. Yeah, I know. We could just get Luis Garcia back in as a honorary member. Yeah. And then and then finally we can yeah. put that shit to bed because VAR is yeah. a thing now. I think no, I actually quite enjoyed the Champions League. I think it's this season. Mental this it year. It was yeah, absolutely yeah. absolutely <laughs> insane. The, it was the, fucking insane. The final was the worst game. Oh. Since the worst Champions the worst Champions League final I can remember. Yeah, hands it was down. Fucking in terms of the quality, absolute fucking try. Yeah, but I, I love that like it was Harry Kane that ruined the for them. Yeah, by f- deliberately f- trying, to, essentially forcing himself into the team. Yeah, by declaring himself fit when he very 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 clearly wasn't. But that that oh, just oh, doesn't make. Oh, what a fucking header! Yeah, that was a great header. Is that car? Yeah. Yes. yes. There we go. So, See, we, we call it lads. We're we're like we're, like proper suits say it's here. Um. So yes. So. <clears throat> Him having their star player, yeah, half crocked, ruin a Champions League final for them. Oh, just it was. Yeah. I remember seeing on Twitter that like it just shows, like the Spurs mentality that Harry Kane, the captain, would rather lose the match and play than yeah. win it. And but he just wanted bench. to play. He yeah. wanted to do it for for the lads. You wanted you know? to keep the ball. <laughs> even in, the absurd thing is like Poch could have made that shout and said no if I put yeah. Sonomara on we will have a better chance yeah did the, Sonomara the, the even play he came on at like a sub in the 60th minute oh fucking hell like, but it was too late like you know I'm the man who bashes home a hat trick against Ajax against Ajax to single hat to send you through like stick that fucker I, up I front I'd a <laughs> transfer request if I was more if, if I got dropped after that yeah no for somebody who was to the obvious to everybody. Yeah. He was just not. Because even Firmino was touch and go. And and even we slung him off yeah. when we realized, okay, he's only got 60 minutes in him. We're still mm-hmm. leading, but, you know, we have. we If we keep him on the pitch, there's the last chance of, of a goal. Yeah. You know, well, well, we'll get to that because, again, it's one of those weird things in hindsight. If you were to tell me that, first of all, that the one player that would win a Merseyside derby. Score two against Barcelona to get us true to the final of the Champions League final and then score in the Champions League final was Divock Origi. Yeah. <laughs> if you said it to me last year, I would not fucking believe you. I could have picked any player outside of that. I could have picked Danny Ings. That was more likely. <laughs> Daniel Sturridge. That was more likely. <laughs> Eddie Heskey. That was more likely. Super Heskey. Super Heskey. Didn't Origi get a new contract? Because he, is, he will be getting a new contract. It's, it's I just, know. I'm like, the resurgence of him, it's hilarious because even though he's essentially done quite uh, virtually anything you could have asked of the player yeah it still doesn't seem like Klopp's sure of <laughs> <laughs> well, he, he just knows it that's, works that's my point that's my point <laughs> You know, it, it it's, it's like applying a mathematical for, a solution to a formula. It's like you, you don't understand the solution. Like I know this will work. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those. Ac- it's, it's like it's an accidental discovery. Yeah. It's like you found a new element. It was like Oregio. It's like I don't know what it is, but it works. Can you do it again? Uh, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he's like the most potent forward we've yeah. had. But like, that, that, my, that's my point. Like for all the. It, it's hilarious, all the craziness and ludicrous nature of the preceding games. Mm. Barcelona utterly capitulating and shipping so many fucking goals. But that's like, that, that, that was following in like a long line of capitulations yeah, this year. Ajax steamrollering Juve and Real Madrid. And then only, only to go out to fucking Spurs because. Oh! You can't oh, 
can't, you can't, you can't pretend you to go. You cannot say you got no, the ball there. That is, that, that's, that's wrong. That oh, is. Be, oh, wow, that's straight a book. Got away with that, love. Look Sorry. All right. If anybody wanted, to, was if, you, if you're side. watching the uh, Brazil women's Italian game so far, you know what we mean. Oh, oh! <laughs> sock for Jesus. Christ's sake! That's that nasty. went over the shin guard. Ow! <sighs> fucking hellfire! Yeah, at 14 minutes and 20 <laughs> seconds. Her shin guard is around at the back of her calf now. Yeah. <laughs> She's gone full greenish. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh. But yeah, as I said, like it was the, the whole the Champions League campaign was all based off capitulations. Well, especially once it got into the round of 16. Capitulations and just ridiculous scorelines. Yeah. yeah. So when it got to the final, I was like... Oh, this is going like, to be fucking like we had like three, I think we had, all the signs were there that this was going to be a shit fest. Uh, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so ma- it was I, so random I was, to start off with. Too naive and yes, re- reading all the signs for what they said. Yeah, which was goals. <laughs> and what we got was shit. Yeah, like I'm trying to even think like what was the best one. I obviously like Liverpool Barcelona is gonna be remembered as the best one, but even stuff like PSG United that was a crazy one as well. That was a fucking mental game because United had no players and they still somehow managed to beat PSG and Neymar's gormless rapey face looking going oh. <laughs> it's like how how are they lost because uh, you weren't fucking playing you idiots nah nah my my, my best game of the kind of run up um, has to be either I'll have to toss a coin it'll have to be either Ajax putting out Juve or Ajax putting out I think Ajax put out Real was better. Oh, what a save. What a save. Ajax put out Real, yeah. That was definitely the better one yeah. because I think with the Euro one it was actually kind of signpost of it because they had put out Real. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's like it was like yeah, it was the original fucking hell. It was like the difference between the original and the sequel. It. She flicked it. She oh, did with too. the leg that nearly got taken off. Yeah. <laughs> that would have been so appropriate, wouldn't it? That's the that story. That's the flies with the ball. <laughs> <laughs> like that's storytelling in a nutshell, isn't it? I mean, fucking hell. But yeah, like um oh man. It's it's been a it's been a fun campaign for us, like because of course because you won. Not even that, no. But but the, for the group <laughs> stages, for the group stages, we were nearly out. Yeah, we were in a very bad group. But, like, what team could say? What team actually? No team could say that they went through that. Yeah, like Spurs could say the exact same thing. Oh, it's great we got to the final when you consider we were almost out. Yeah, if fucking Ajax had done it. Yeah. Ajax could have been sitting in the final and go, oh, well, we got to the final. We could have been out. Considering they came from like the third the playoffs, like no, the third qualifying that's round. That's yeah. You know, and now they're going to get pillaged. Yeah. Um, absolutely fucking pillaged. But that's what Ajax wants. They build up a golden generation, cash in, and then yeah. that funds the next one. Exactly. Circle of life, lads. Mm. It's just basically seven It's not a circle of life. It's a circle of fucking death. <laughs> D-E-B-T. Is... <laughs> <laughs> um... So anyway, that is more or less our Champions League rundown. Do you want to talk about the Europa League? No. No? No? no. Not even a bit about how Chelsea beat us 4-1? Everything is... Yeah, they beat us 4-1 and then subsequently let their manager go and their best player. Aha! We will get to them in the, in the next segment. But, yeah, um, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's our talk, that's our, um, talk of the Champions League rundown. We're just seeing nothing but fouls here in this game, to be honest. This is a <laughs> fantastic game. <laughs> the, the ref is slanging out more yellow than the Brazilians are actually wearing. Yes, I thought you were going to make an E joke there. Which I was, was actually. Yeah. I was, I was, you were nearly, you just you self edited there. I'm impressed with mm-hmm. you. It shows you you're serious about this podcast. <laughs> I actually really yeah. Yes. So let's move on then. Um, I suppose this is kind of half time ish, but uh, I suppose we just rattle through then to our next segment, which is. Hey, our... a little musical interlude right here. Yeah, I could do that. I don't, I don't need to do a musical interlude, you've just done it. <laughs> you're a high pitched just... warbling. Our next, our last set piece now of this uh, podcast, because uh, <clears throat> we d- we are slightly running out of topics now at this stage, is our Premier League rundown. 
Or we can probably throw in the uh, cups in this as well because they were fucking nothing to talk about, really. Well, they're all one by one team. Yes, so I think we'll just, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll just like just bracket into the whole. They're, uh, they're all won by one team, and it's the one team that didn't give a shit about any of them and didn't <laughs> want to win them because they didn't win the one cup that they wanted to fucking win, which was the Champions League. Yeah, I, again, I find which it makes so- it so fucking brilliant. I it's like when, I, like when France won the World Cup, and I was like, okay, then. Hugo Lloris now is a World Cup winner's medal. But he made such a huge gaffe in the final yeah. that it tainted it for him. And I was like, ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we. I was like, now I'm happy with this. No. What's I, the French for Sheldon Friday? <laughs> I think it's uh, La Sheldon Friday because it's a feminine now. But uh, don't ask me how I know that. So, um, I suppose the best thing to do is actually run down the table and see what happens. So, starting from the bottom... Um, no, we're give, here. I suppose you're yes. <laughs> Thank you for that reference. Um, we'll start off, I guess, with the relegated teams and laugh at their dismay. Huddersfield Town. I don't think we're really surprised that they went down. Well, no, I think we all kind of predicted. I know we don't have the list in front of us, so I'm free to lie as much as I want. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we made predictions at the start of the season, and uh, now they've they gone missing. YouTube? They would be on YouTube, yes. Ah, oh, yeah, but I have to go onto YouTube then. And I've had we listen to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not. <laughs> I've had my fill of Intel videos. <laughs> um. <laughs> Enough about our own content. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think I wasn't too surprised when Huddersfield went down. No. They went down quite early, didn't they? Really, yeah, they were really. Gone early. in April, weren't they? I'd say they were relegated when they sacked David Wagner. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, and then they and then they replaced him with uh, Martin from Wakefield. Yes. Which was probably the, one of the funniest moments of the season. They had no idea who the uh, new coach was. They heard that he had a name. They had a picture. They found that lo- they found someone who looked very similar in the crowd. And the Sky reporter like, bumps in and goes, Hi, are you uh, Jan Seward? He's like, No, I'm Martin from Wakefield. <laughs> Sorry for disturbing you. <laughs> and then Huddersfield Town, knowing that they're going to get relegated, said, Fuck it, let's just have a laugh. So they get the same guy in to act like Jan Seward for the announcer video. <laughs> and then Jan Seward, with the fucking worst acting I've seen since Tommy Wiseau, and fucking goes in and just goes, no, that is my seat. Hello, I am Jan Seward. It's like, <laughs> this is not going to end well, is it? <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of things that do not Anyone end well. Anyone who does that sort of announcement video deserves to get relegated. To be fair, I think he knew what he was walking into, really. You know, <laughs> just like, listen, Jan, you're not going to believe it. There's a guy in the crowd that looks exactly like you. We're going to get you in, a, get him in as an announcement video. It's like, we'll make the whole thing worth it. Can I, can I resign <laughs> now, or... <laughs> No, we're waiting to do mathematically done, and then you're out. Yes. No, he's, he's going to stay on. He's oh, staying is on. He? Yeah, he's staying on for the for the championship campaign. To be honest, I think he was hired for the championship campaign because mm. even in January they were signing players mm. that they would be using next season. They weren't trying to like, you know, flog a dead horse. Oh anymore. yeah, no, absolutely. But either way, I do think that we're not going to see them again. Probably not. No, because actually the, the worst thing is their their owner um, is stepping down as well because mm. he has cancer. And Aww, the sad, th- yeah. It's a sad story, but to be fair, like the actual fairy tale of actually getting there is enough for him. Yeah. Because he's selling it at a ma- the selling club at a massive profit, mm-hmm. like for whatever he bought it for in like League One. So that's a good story. Yeah. Like. No. No. It's a, yeah. No, it's good, but we're not going to see them again. Particularly when you consider the fucking the skill level of the teams that have been promoted. Yeah. Exactly. We Le- will get Leeds are back. Yeah. They not. The fuck. They're not. They're not. I did not. No. They didn't get, Aston Villa won the playoff. Oh motherfucker! Villa are back. They they beat Frank Lampard's derby. And Frank Lampard's derby beat Leeds United. Oh, fucking hell. Sorry, Marcelo Bielsa's Leeds United. I keep getting that mixed up. I'm Marcelo, sorry. Yeah, that yeah. shows how much attention I'm playing. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens if you go on a holiday for three weeks. Yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> Sauce yourself, silly. Uh, speaking of going on holiday, um, <laughs> Fulham. <laughs> this was a fucking car crash, wasn't it? I had so much hopes for them. I so think did I, had, I. I think I had them up in the top ten. I had them in their... I had a mid-table. Based yeah, on yeah I definitely didn't have them relegated. I'll have to admit, I'm, I'm, <laughs> when you mentioned Fulham there, I was like, oh, I'm actually kind of happy we don't have our prediction tables. And yeah, because, <laughs> yeah. That, I don't want to see where yeah, they came we, we would have We would have made quite embarrassing of ourselves. I, I know I put two of their players like straight, I, th- I think I put Seri straight into my fantasy football team. Yeah. And Shirley as well. I yeah. Think. I had Mitrovic in from the start. No, you'd Mitrovic, yeah. Yeah. To be fair, like, I when we had recorded the podcast, <laughs> they had not gone full mad in the transfer market because they had signed sensible enough signings. They got Mitrovic back in. They had got a new goalkeeper, brilliant. They got no, defenders. They got John Seri, which is huge, like 26 million. Like everybody seemed to be, everybody and their dogs seemed to be in for him and then he went to Fulham. I was like, yeah. what? But here's the, and here's what happened. When we recorded that, Fulham went mental. Yeah. They signed another goalkeeper. They signed fucking Luciano Vieto on loan. 
They signed some fucker, whoever he is, Zam- Zambo Anguisa, who's their record signing for 28 million. Oh, Anguisa. And he was terrible. Oh. He's one of the worst midfielders I've ever seen playing the Premier so League. garbage. It's like seeing fucking Lucas Leiva, like, cro- dipped in chocolate. <laughs> it's just, it, he's just so bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, I don't understand why they signed him. And then they doubled down then in the in the January market when they had Ranieri in charge mm-hmm. and said, "Okay, we'll sign Ryan Babel," which was actually probably the best signing of the yeah. of the season. When you were when even Liverpool fans were going, <laughs> "I remember him." He was shit. I, it was quite good. I watched and then well, not an inordinate, but I watched more Fulham games than I would have usually watched. Yeah. Purely because they had Callum Chambers on loan. Yes. And decided not to play him as a defender, but as a holding midfielder. Well, that was Scott Parker that was doing that. But yeah. when Jukanovic when was in charge, he was definitely centre-back. Yeah. And was really exposed. Yeah. But when he was a holding midfielder, he like, he'd scored like six goals. Yeah. He was brilliant oh, no. as a holding midfielder. But, to the point that most Arsenal fans now believe that when he comes back, mm. I think he's, got the, he's also the unfortunate distinction of being loaned out twice in succession to two teams. Three times, Three actually. times. Three, Three times. times. Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough. Uh, fuck! What was the other one? Fulham, obviously. Fulham. There was one. There's one in between them. Burnley? No, it wasn't Burnley. No, no, no. Uh, I was actually wrong completely. He has been relegated twice. He has been relegated twice, not three times. Oh. I just got my years wrong. Mm. So he spent a year at, just at Arsenal in a quandary, apparently. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> again, speaking of quandaries, uh, Cardiff. Woo! They were a bit of fun actually this year, weren't they? Were they? Fun. They were absolutely no chance of get of staying up. But my God, they actually they actually tried. They were very very close. The actual idea, like, I don't think... Actually, it would be the perfect embodiment of Brexit if Neil Warnock was able to keep a team in the Premier League, wouldn't it? <laughs> like, if, if he was able to stay there while it was all happening, where all the borders were shutting down and the duty-free was closing down and the airports were being set on fire and the one person to prevail through it all, the one person happy with football at that moment in time was Neil Warnock. I mean, it would have been funny, yeah, but I think... Morally, this is the right decision for for a card to be relegated. Oh yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. Really I, I think that is one of the ones I actually had to go down. Yes, yeah. I am. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't give him a chance. Oh, go on. Oh. Hey, that's oh. offside. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. Like they were. They were fine. Yeah. Uh, they were. They were a Neil Warnock side. Yeah. Like as and much as I hate that creature, Neil Warnock. Um, <laughs> oh, great stuff. But yeah, um, no surprise with really with Cardiff. They were always destined to go down, but they were going to put up a good fight and did. I think they only got relegated at the second weekday against Palace, mm-hmm. which is kind of even funnier considering Palace fucking love Neil Warnock for some reason. He's always seems to manage there for whatever for he's like the default manager for some reason. Yeah, he shows up like a fucking bad penny. Yeah, <laughs> and fucks the team up. Yeah, they sack him. And then, then they bring him back. They, yeah, it's like an abuse of law or something like that. They keep taking him back even though they know what's going to happen. And they, know, <laughs> they, they know his views on the dark people. Yeah, they know his views on <laughs> the foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so in a, in a sense, like, um, two, I, I, you could argue maybe Fulham was a bit of a surprise there, but that's that was before they went mental with money. Yeah. And generally speaking, even with Fulham, they just never played the right players. Oh, no, absolutely. It was a very much a case of a, the whole being far, far less than the sum of its parts. Absolutely, yeah. Like when you consider the players they had, you're thinking, even on just sheer individual skills set alone, that team should have done something. Yeah. Oh, well, at the very least, sorry, not done something, but just not gotten relegated. Like you'd think that someone like Seri, for example, would run, would, would showcase how good he is. Yeah. No, he did not. No. And I even say like he ain't being bothered twenty something million over again. No, no, no. That that's his career done. Twenty maybe. <laughs> but are we talking about us next? I'll talk about Manchester United. But oh, yeah. I was kind of like relating to it. Like yeah. those three teams I mentioned are all gonna have to have a rebuild. They had year a next race season. to finish outside the top four. Mm. In the, like it was a shambles. Such like, a bad end to your. It your was season. so terrible. It yeah. was like, we'll, we'll get on to Arsenal when we we go after. But like, Man United, for example, Man United, like that, that, that season was chaos. Man them. United are terrible. They're just absolutely terrible. Since Mourinho has left, mm. like he since must be... Alex Ferguson left, yeah, let's qualify that. Yeah, yeah. But like, but after like the nosedive after, well, they took a bit of a turn up when Mourinho left. Yeah. Then they literally the instant Solskjaer made it, was made permanent. That I just which was the dumbest not, fucking yeah, the dumbest the thing. Worst Why make ever. him permanent? There was no need to make him permanent at that point. No incentive. Wait yeah. until the end of the season. Wait until the end of the season and then do stuff. Why were you trying to make up shit full tilt? Like in hindsight now, when you look at how many managers are now on no, the market. 
yeah. Like look at look at look at who manage, what manager you could get now at this point. Yeah. You could lure Pochettino out of Spurs. Allegri is gone out of Juventus. Yeah. You could have got Valverde from from Barca if you wanted to, because yeah. he's not going to stay there. No. You could have got fucking. You could have got tons of managers. You could lure Thomas Tuchel away. Sarri is another show. You know, there's so many managers out there. Rafa even could have been lured, but I don't think he would take it. But at least there's options out there to stick with, to actually give the job to Solskjaer completely. Not even any incentives, like, well done, you won eight games in a row, you got us back up to speed, you beat PSG in an utterly insane game where PSG essentially beat themselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because, like, like I said, United had a tread better squad, Rashford had a brilliant game, and that's what won it for them. Yeah. You know, but at the same token, there is no, there was no plan there. It was literally, it sound, in a way it was like a very emotional decision, but... It's not an emotional decision. It's an incompetent decision. It's like literally, we have nothing else. I could be both. I don't think so. <laughs> like, do you think Ed Woodward's an emotional guy? I don't think so. I think he's in. Again, I've, I've been I saying do this. I think he's a, an emotional guy because because he's definitely not a footballing guy. He's absolutely not a footballing <laughs> guy. What he is though, what he is though, he is a marketing guy. So I think is it's, he a robot? I'd say he's more of a pug. Yeah. yeah, he's got a little kind of a pug face. Him. But yeah, the thing is, marketing's all about emotion. It's all about triggering emotions in other people. That's, to get them this, to buy your shit. this is my point. Yeah. I think the strategy here is that you have Solskjaer at the helm. It's more of a fan grab to say you now have one of the one of the legends of the Fergie team in there, and you have all these alert allusions to the Fergie team, and that's where your mm. your marketing drive is. So it's not actually for football reasons, in my opinion. That they have Solskjaer in charge, it's to make money, mm. and that's and that's been their that's been their transfer system for a long, long time. Do not get players in that are better for the team. Get names, get Pogba, get Fred. Fred is red. That's a great hashtag. Fucking Alexis Sanchez because he's the hot. He's what people are talking about at that point. Put him, give him all the money, and let him sit on the bench. Pog back. Yeah, <laughs> but like I say, everything's a hashtag, and everything's Everything a campaign with them. You know, we we can compare with like even compare with Man City for example, right? What they're doing now this season is getting players that they need. They're getting Rodri in, who's going to ball to the midfield. They're getting Gio Cancelo in, who's going to be a fullback. That's all the players they need. It's laser focus. It's what they want. We'll do the same thing eventually when Klopp like, gets away from his hangover. Because he's still fucking hammered from the Champions League final, as you can imagine. Yeah. But it's laser focus recruitment. With Man United, I would hope, because at least the names they're being linked with are at least better than what they have been doing. There seems to be a new policy in place with Dan James. He's a good player. I don't know if he'll get a shot because I, there's going to be some tough decisions there in that team. Because ahead of like of, of Dan, jo- Dan James is Martial. So I think you'd have to shift Martial before you can even play James. Yeah, but who, who, uh, this is my who would take him, though? That's, That's the this difference. Is, this is again, we were talking about this beforehand. Like I reckon that they're in serious trouble of losing a lot of players. But the players that they're going to lose aren't the players they want to lose. Yeah. So they're going to lose players like De Gea. Uh, James will probably go. Uh, I'd say they'd rather keep Rashford. but like, I think Rashford would go. Uh, if, Rashford if, would if a team go, like Spurs, even if a team like Spurs, for example, just yeah, is he's here. He's demanding like 300k yeah. a week off the bastards. Like, you know, fuck off. What have you done to earn that? You know? yeah. They're not going to lose the likes of Sanchez, who's been in... Fucking One of the worst disaster. transfers in years. It's been absolutely a disaster. Pogba, who's been a disaster. Lukaku, who has somehow gotten worse, <clears> which <throat> I don't understand how because he literally started off being having one of the worst first touches. It's like he's I've lost ever seen. all of his pace as well. He's lost all of his pace. He's lost all of his pace because he's got fat. He's really yeah. huge. Like he's really, and really big. On that, on that point, Luke Shaw as well. Yeah, Luke Shaw again. The whatever fitness regime he was doing at one point to mm. burn off. The spare tire he had, he was carrying around. Holy shit, he's back on the fucking roasters. Yes. <laughs> um, he's back. You know, their entire their defense is completely shot. Yes. Yeah. McTominay? Yeah. Is, but I, at least he is a product of the academy. At least he's a player that's I don't know, he him. just runs around like a headless chicken. I think mm. in one of the matches I watched, he ran around and tried to tackle three players. Yeah. <laughs> missed every single tackle then fell over his own feet and it, called for in his defence he is he is shoring up defensive work that Pogba and Herrera should be doing you know so yeah. I do feel a little bit of sympathy for him that, in that he is basically trying to clean up after basically just the most mercenary player you can get on the pitch and Herrera who's just so apparently now player. wants a new challenge yes what what have you done <laughs> exactly <laughs> what the fuck you know he's oh, only, he's only rope league final I think it's time you know. for a new challenge Fuck off. Yeah. 
A new challenge coincident, coinciding with Mino Ranola getting his uh, ban overturned by FIFA. Yeah. Crazy how that works, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But yeah, case, it's, a, it's a mess up there. It's, um, it's an absolutely unmitigated mess. They don't have a technical director. Um, they're not going to hire one. No. Woodward's going to be making most of the decisions. He's an incompetent bull. Um, <laughs> on the footballing side, anyway, he does make money for the club, which it's, is why yeah, he's but, still there. Yeah, but to be honest, fairness, like, it's not that difficult to make money as if you're Manchester United. Yeah. Like, all Ferg's... One of the main things the Fergie period was they built up this financial juggernaut. Yeah. You know? That's why Je- That's why nobody... When they were winning the league every second fucking year, nobody was really complaining even though their fans were really annoying. Yeah. Because we all kind of thought... Different you teams. kind of accepted how the main, diff- the main difference between them and City and Chelsea <clears throat> yeah. that bought their success was that Manchester United kind of earned it. It was earned. They were the best team. It was earned success. Like, all the money that they make, they make a huge amount of fucking cash. Yeah. But, but and it was because they had a policy in to mm. to use the academy. Yeah. Because even if you speak to United fans, uh, their always thing was that we always use our own players. Yeah. But that idea of using the academy has been lost over the uh, over the most recent basically, years. Basically, basically because they can't come up with another class of '92. No. And that's what they're trying to try to do, and yeah. I don't think it's going to work. Oh no, it's not going to work. You know, they have good players in there. Like nobody gives it to the academies that every other team has. Yeah, exactly. Like you have players like they have a red a red hot striker they're, they're hoping is going to turn out really well like Mason Greenwood he's mm. supposed to be a good player who's but, the more paired one? Uh, Tabit Chong Chong yeah Yeah. now they have high hopes for him as well Yeah. but the problem is that's it Yeah. they only got two You if you're going to do this yeah. whole new policy now you have to buy in which is yeah. why they're being forced to spend 50 million on Wan-Bissaka yeah. I don't know if he'll actually go for it that's the point that's, you know, that's also that, I think that's a very stupid thing on Palace's behalf if they don't but in any case that squad needs such a major overhaul. There's at least 12 players there on the transfer list. Yeah. <laughs> at yeah. least 12. At least 12. But the thing is, would you shift any of those 12? Yeah. Because um, even, even the more upsetting, the players that I actually quite like in that team, likes of Herrera, is gone. He just left. Yeah. He's done. So fuck this. He'll just, get, he'll just go off now and just get his, a contract back yeah. in Spain or go to PSG, whichever. Yeah. Whichever comes first. Exactly. And that's a big big loss. Mm-hmm. Like He's going to be a very underrated loss in that midfield yeah. because I don't think he's going to be replaced adequately. Like Fred is going to be expected to be a first team player and holy shit, he's not a first team player. He's yeah. just really, really bad. He's, 50, not, he's not even a player. No, he's very bad. Very bad. He's a statue. 53 million pounds, that's just uh. saying. But Chelsea then. Well, <laughs> Arsenal is Arsenal. next up on my list. So um, the only reason a lot of people aren't talking, while well, the press aren't really leaning so heavily into what a sham Arsenal is, is because the previous team are a kind of sham shield, because they're such a catastrophe. We're in a sh- like a, a sham sandwich. Absolutely, yeah. like a total sham sandwich. And <laughs> I love the metaphor. People are just focusing on the two bits of bread. Yes. And ignoring the the sham jam. The, the juicy, juicy filling. <laughs> <laughs> Juicy, juicy feeling of Arsenal. Well, you're so, due, you two are the Arsenal fuck. fans here, so tell me what's going on with your club. <laughs> we <Fuck>. don't know. <laughs> right. It's dead. Okay, it's right. Dead. Initially, right, so we scrapped Wenger. Well, we got rid of Wenger because it had to be done. Had yes. to be done. Just had to be done. And there was a great plan that was put in place by Ivan Gazidis. And that's the only good thing I will ever, ever say about Ivan Gazidis. Mm-hmm. They got in a great uh, new head of recruitment in Sven Mislinta. We got in a great uh, head of high performance in, um, oh, I don't know what his name is. Steve. It's, Let's just call him Steve. Steve, yeah. yeah. I actually think his name might be Steve. He's the same. I really um, love this stuff. So he came in and worked alongside the new um, medical head, Shad Forsyth. Yes. Um, to boost up the fitness. So the back team, the back, the, the back room team was great. Per Mertesacker retired to run the academy. We had Freddie Youngberg working with the under 18s and under 23s. We got in a stat driven coach, Unai Emery, and it was going to be this lovely kind of holistic collective restructuring. Kind of like a le- Benger legacy. Kind of, a, sort of like just to correct all of the uh, problems that yeah. we had with a, an, all a, a complete dictatorship. Well, not dictatorship. But Auto- a, autocracy. Pretty much, mm. yeah, with Wenger. In solving the problems that we saw, had with Wenger we've created a whole host of new ones because most of the names <laughs> you mentioned there are now gone most of the, yeah most <laughs> of them Ivan Gazidis has now gone to AC Milan which yeah. I'm actually quite happy with I was not a Gazidis fan no. what no. a fucking ever his recruitment was quite poor he's, yeah he's just not, he's not a good man but the fact that he put in a huge position in order for him to make a huge power grab after mm. Wenger left and then left himself yeah. doesn't augur well 
We promised Sven Midsland Tat the technical director position and then backed out of it, leaving forcing him to leave 11 months or 8, 12, 13 months later. Yeah. Um, after he secured us a good few players, such as Aubameyang. Yeah, um, big get. Our pedophile performance is now left. Yes, Steve. Um, because his job was considered to be overlapping too much with Chad for sites, and the club, having now missed out again on Champions League football, has to drastically cut its costs. Mm. We're losing money constantly, uh, and then that, and that's by the way, and that's just before you get to the squad. <laughs> yes, because the squad still has. If anything, the squad's failings have now crystallised since yeah. so, because the issue like the issue with Wenger football before then was that you have now become a glass cannon the problem is now with Emery football is that he's trying to be as just as cavalier but they're tr like almost trusting the defenders to do what the right thing is I, 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 the I, defenders I, you have are not good enough really. the, thing, the thing about uh, Emery is that well I think the main criticism that have, people have of him is that nobody really knows what he's trying to do mm. when he started off it was actually going really well the team had a he bit kind of, of kept, he kind of kept his, the team on his toes a little bit. Yeah, outside the team of had a, the time. The, the team had a bit of an, ident an identity. Yeah, um, it played quite well. Um, it played quite well. Yeah, and but then we lost Rob Holding, who was playing brilliantly mm. to you know he, to the ACL sniper. Yeah, uh, Bellerin then went and did his as well in, so we lost one of our first choice centre backs mm. and our first choice right back. Yeah. Which meant you're stuck with the fucking Lichsteiner. <laughs> Those two lads joined the five Arsenal ladies team in the ACL. It just the ACL recovery. Yeah, yeah the ACL recovery. <laughs> room. Then Welbeck went over on his ankle in quite possibly the most horrible that fashion. Was, yeah, I um, felt bad for him. In fairness, yeah, no, he felt bad. So, but then coming up to January, because they they got injured in mm. and around December January. So then the January transfer window comes in. What happens? We signed a Dennis Suarez on loan, who, even by his own admission, wasn't even 50% fit after two and a half weeks of training. Yeah. It's he was insane. literally only fit enough to sign the fucking contract. Yeah. And uh, he was a total disaster. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's not... And then Aaron Ramsey. And then, yeah, we lost Aaron Ramsey for free. That, 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 gave... that, that was kind of given at the start of this season. So yeah. we were kind of given, like, we were kind of... You were braced for it, really. Yeah. Braced, but at the same time, it was still sickening to know yeah. that he did not want to go. No, I'll put it to you this way. What, do you think he was let go because he was, classified in a way, considered a Wenger player? No. No. It was... Because a lot of that generation is gone what, now. From what I've got of... Yeah, uh, no, I, I, I get that exactly, but... I don't think so. Okay. Uh, what I get from the situation was the contract was on offer. It was on the table. He'd signed it. Yeah. And then because Wenger wasn't there to go to Silent mm. Stan and go, here, sanction this. Yeah. We need this. So this other guy comes in, Stan's like, who the fuck you? You want me to pay how much for this guy? Mm. And the club pulled the contract. And is that another? that's obviously another major issue as well, is that now you're, oh, not, yeah, we're you're now privately owned. We're now privately owned. We're now majority owned by Stan Kroenke. One of the most horrible human beings in the world. He's horrendous he's, and I hate him. He's yeah. fucking horrendous. We're essentially, Arsenal's problems stem primarily from being owned by a business owner who doesn't see the point in a, investing in an asset. Yeah. Which, um, I know I don't have a business degree and none of us here, but I think that's kind of business 101. Generally you have an asset, you want it to improve, perform, you invest in it. Yes. yes. He has literally never, ever, 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 since he came to Arsenal, ever, mm. put a single penny into the club. And he's like that with most of his clubs in the US as well. Like the Golden uh, State, kind the, of, yeah, not, the basketball not, team, not, not great. Actually, really. He's poured 1.6 billion into building the Rams a new stadium. Fucking hell, like... But then again, he'll just use that to sell. Like I say, it's it's the infrastructure. It's not the actual football. It's a club or competition. It's it's, it's a okay, thing. Yeah, give us something. Yeah, you know we're we're, we're not looking, building a new stadium. We're right? staring down the barrel of going into this transfer window with what about forty or fifty million, which is nothing. Which is nothing. Especially when you look again, Wan Basaka is a great example. That's one player for fifty million. Yeah. Uh, or like Burnley spending like potentially forty seven million on some you know players I haven't heard of. Yeah, Burnley. A champ. They're, they're championship players. They don't forget. Like yeah. the two championship players now will cost you forty seven million. That's the market. And now. this is my point. God. So like, so to kind of sum up everything, you see, there is like an overwhelming sense of 
dread amongst you between for the Arsenal. Well, it depends next on season. who we, it depends on who we sign. I don't but think can you sign? sign? That's think... the issue. Can you sign? Well, they've these been linked to now. Well, the, the caliber of player we've been linked with now has gone drastically down. When I was, we're still being linked with Carrasco. Uh, we're being linked with Ryan fucking Fraser. Mm-hmm. Because the team desperately need winners. And Claude Maurice from Lorient. Yeah, they, Alexis, those Claude, Alexis Claude Maurice, who's actually uh, who has gone on record saying that he wants to go to Arsenal. Yes, but will will um, they pay sixteen million for him? For third choice, for third choice striker. Who, who knows? Who, mm. who, who cares? <laughs> <laughs> who, who, I think a lot of people care, Neil. So um, in the um, yeah. in the end, fuck knows. Like, oh, literally, it's the shrug. Arsenal could is just a shrug emoji. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I don't really. I'm not very optimistic. Mm. I don't think I was very optimistic going into last season, and no. then we had this run of ten games unbeaten. I was like, oh my god, no! I'm feeling hope. This can't happen. And then your waveform happens. Yeah. 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 Um, and then yeah, so then it just went downhill from there. Yeah. And it yeah, I think it, we're gonna continue in that downward slide. That's why I'm thinking. And uh, again, here's my hot take: you guys are gonna finish seventh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Seventh. Anyway, Next. So Spurs. Now they've they made, they they've fourth, yeah. Fourth place. Chelsea? Chelsea finished third. Oh yeah, they did fourth. Now Spurs made hard fucking work at that fourth place, considering that they were in, in comparison to everyone else, they were considering fairly well. Consider that they're literally playing a card game with a deck of twelve cards. Yeah. Um my god, that th- squad is threadbare. Mm. And I think it's only gonna get more threadbare when the repayments from the stadium kicking this is what I was trying to figure out is that are they trying to sign players now so they don't have to sign for the next three years probably and just bill and just set that's why that they, they got everybody that they could get on the contract extensions big yeah. ones they got like Ali uh, Son Mora um, Mora, Mora was a recent one now Mora yeah. Kane couldn't get Ericsson to sign one so I reckon he'll be off he'll be gone yeah yeah. Um, he's been spoiling for a move for the last two or three years now I'll have to admit mm. Uh, and all to better because he's a fucking great player and I hate when he plays for him. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah. against Ireland. Or against Ireland. Yeah, yes. exactly. Broke our hearts. Can't. Um, but yeah. Funny enough, when in the run into the Champions League final, yeah. they were wrecked. Yeah. That huge gap between the mm. last game and the final. It's... I thought they benef- I thought that was going to really harm you, yeah. at Liverpool. And really benefit them because they were. I've never seen a team as shagged out before in my life. Even the Bournemouth game when they just completely lost their heads and got two of their players sent off. Oh, I, that think that was, hilarious. I think that was purely to give them a break. Yeah, I know. Like, even just like, oh, fuck this, I want an early shower. Yeah. Um, yeah, Potageno weaving yet more miracles. He's done brilliant. He so really he has. Look, 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 yeah, as an Arsenal support, you have to give the man credit to do what he's working what he's with. Done yeah. With that bunch of shite. But not even that, but make match winners out of Son and Mora. Like, even, again, I was talking about Rigi and how obscene that sounds. But the fact that, like, a team that's so focused on Harry Kane, trying to make them their Alan Shearer. You know, Alan Shearer never had a backup at Newcastle. He was always Alan Shearer. Mm. But the fact is, like, listen, I think the right on the wall for me personally that Harry Kane is not going to last long. That Whatever ankle injury he has is not healing. Because whenever he comes back on, whenever he's back playing... It's a pressure injury. Like it's it's whatever the issue is. It's not curing. It's not being fixed, and he's just playing so many games for both club and country. They won't let the man have a fucking break. Oh, I'm delighted for that because every time he plays, they get worse. Well, this is my point. You now have two players that can fill in that role, and in my opinion, they've been better with those two players. Oh, no, they're, 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 they're far, far better. They're far better than what they came. Yeah, far far. Just better. even the amount of because movement the, the, they do. The threats are multiple. The yeah. threats are coming from everywhere. And even the players like Ali actually start stepping forward when he's, and scoring. When he's in the pitch, all you do is just mark Kane. Yeah. Because why? Because all they want to do is get the ball to Kane, mm-hmm. and that's all they're told to do: get the ball to Kane. Yeah. Maybe get that to Sterling. For England, yes. Sterling is also an alternative threat, which is why England are so good. They're and they're playing as, up front. They're not as hyper reliant on yeah. Kane as Spurs are. Spurs seemingly, sorry, Spurs have convinced themselves that they are. They aren't actually reliant. It's actually codependent. It's, it's, so, it's, it so, it's like yeah. somebody being hooked on a placebo. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a very <laughs> good way of putting it. It's a good way of putting it. It's a really good way of putting it's it. Like, it, because it, does, it does nothing for you. Yeah. Why are you taking it? But Stop! Every, and, every, and everyone can see it. Like, I don't know, it's probably because he's a club captain and there's an obligation to play yeah. him. But system, like, even thinking about it, like, surely, you yeah. can tell from a performance point of view, yeah. it is better to drop him, let him heal up. Yeah. Do, do what we did with Henderson. Yeah. Because what we did with Henderson, we switched him back to number six because he had a fucking bone spur in his heel. I don't think, but I don't think he can play in the other players, place. I, no, he can't. Hit. He's a one-trick pony. Not but he's a very, he is a very good pony. That's the problem. dreaded drug, placebo. <laughs> <laughs> so... 
I, I mean, Spurs, I think, are still going to be a decent position just by comparison that the, the teams around them are going to drop oh, off so, quick, I think, so much. Yeah, now that's the thing. The only reason they're up so high is because everybody else around them is such a bag for shite. Yeah. Now, like, if, if a team like Wolves and Leicester or someone like, or even West Ham, I put in that category yeah. potentially, just suddenly get a fucking afterburners on, yeah. it could upset Spurs. But they're need, still going to be a top four team. It doesn't even need that. It just needs, like, huh, I know it's hilarious as this may sound, it just needs, like, Arsenal or. Maybe even Manchester United to get some modicum. Possibly of their, Chelsea. So, or some possibly yeah. Chelsea. I don't. Uh, they seem to feed off the chaos. Yes. To get some modicum of their shit together, yeah. and then they're also the top four. Yeah. yeah. Like they're, it's it's delicate. Like and the only difference. Like different. the thing was, Spurs were like pushing the top two for so long, and then they completely dropped and were nearly out of the top four. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's what and, I was surprised at. How bad they got. That was just like a oh, typical Spurs, but at the same time, we could not capitalize. Like they were dropping. Points. We were, and then we, we were have. going out with two games in hand. Yeah. All we have to do is win these two games, and yeah. we've leapfrogged Spurs I, into the top four. I, re- I remember at one point we were ten to one to stay in the. We were ten to one to get top three. Yeah. I was like we were ten to one because Spurs were fucking up so much. Because everybody else was such a bag of yeah. shit. <laughs> and then we turned into that bag of shit. Then we decided, oh, what they're huffing must be good because look at what they're doing—they're falling all over the kip. This must be great shit. Yeah. Oh no, it's actually shit. <laughs> it Fuck was a. It was. It was a fun end to that season, I must admit. But um, no, it wasn't. No, oh but yeah, it was for me. For me, yeah, it was for me anyway. But um, Chelsea, then let's move on to them. Um, what a fucking <laughs> weird season for Chelsea. It, it, Actually, no, I'll qualify that. What a weird season for Maurizio Sarri. Because no, for I, him, I, I reckon, yeah, it's weird for Sarri because he's probably not done this before or not seen or heard of this before. Yeah. But for Chelsea, it's pretty much par for the course. It is. They've sacked people yeah. after they've won the Champions League. They've sacked Di Matteo after he won the League Cup, and they're still paying him to this day. And the Champions League, they've paid out over ninety million pounds. Yeah. To managers that they fired. Yeah. That's the bulk of their budgets. <laughs> yeah. And now, but now it's really set. Like you can only feast on chaos. Like it's a real brief what you sow thing. Yeah. You know. And unfortunately, this particular to utilize a Johnny Cash line, uh, this whirlwind has a thorn tree in it. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going into a transfer ban, almost certainly going into a two window transfer ban. If they, unless they win the appeal, but I can't see. I don't see them winning no, the, win the appeal. Yeah. Um, they've lost their manager. Uh, they've lost their best player. Mm-hmm. They've managed to sign some fuck. They've managed to sign Pusilic. Yeah. Uh, which I purely think Dortmund sold to him just to stop him from getting it because he'd been spent. <laughs> that was the best deal Dortmund Munich, Munich had spent the entire like yeah. last two seasons basically grooming him. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yes. Uh, so they're not going to be able to sign anybody. Yeah. They've lost their best player. Mm-hmm. That team's starting to come apart of fringes. It's yes. really starting to come apart. William isn't the gone, wing. We've gotten quite old, actually. Yeah. William yeah. isn't the force that he is anymore. David Luiz seems to be more seems to be acting more like Sly Joe Bob than he usually does. Mm. Um, Kepa, Kepa isn't the fucking brick wall that he seems to be anymore. He's, I don't think he's ever been that brick wall. No, really. he's not. He's, but the cat-like reflexes now are starting to... He's starting to do a bit of a dehay. Yes. Um, so the defence is fucked. The midfield without Hazard is it even going to be half of what it is? And half the team aren't even playing um, because it's and as far as yeah. like, as far as strikers, mm. they've on the day on the DL given Giroud a one year extension yeah. as a kind of because they know if they publicly give him a one year extension because nobody wants him at the club despite the fact that he's their best outright best best forward, forward. yeah and um, because if they don't if they publicly give him an extension it will be basically a tacit admission that they're getting the transfer ban yeah. They just had the batten and the hatches. And so, sense. like, they're they're really just kind of going like full doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> d- doomsday packers, like going. Yeah, they're just got. They're going into the. Yeah, they're all the supplies. Yeah. But I think they're going to be yeah. relying on their youth academy. They have we've, to. We've been They've making so fun, many of them. Like the loan farm of Chelsea, that like we've. Forty forty five players. Yeah, but they, I don't know how many other players will have to be sold to. Yeah, but. To balance and to balance the books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like but then again, they've got Champions League football next season. That's it. No. Yeah. That's the thing that, that, that helps out a lot. Um, they've got money to spend on like the investments. Like that Champions League money can go into the academy. Yes. And, like, buy, like, give but that's contracts. not that's not what Chelsea does. I know. I know. I'm just saying, if there's <laughs> yeah. an insane person running a club, yeah. that's what you could do. No. But the thing, like we said, Chelsea thrive on the chaos, chaos and like. The build up to the chip for Europa League mm. was pu- that was pure chaos. Yeah, because it was Sarri going, going mental. Going and shit like, like that. This doesn't feed into Arsenal at all. Because give any Arsenal any kind of idea that the team that they're playing against is under pressure, mm-hmm. and Arsenal are like, well, 
shouldn't we be under pressure? Oh, we'll put ourselves under pressure just in case. Yeah. And, and like, we fuck yeah. it up. Well, when, when, but, like, when you've got keepers refusing to be subbed off, openly telling your manager, oh, I'm, that, that, that was just the craziest thing. That I've was a seen. crazy thing. I don't know. Like, it makes absolutely no sense because you have Willie Caballero, who is the best penalty saver in the league. Like, that's what he's there for. He's deployed to, pe- to save penalties. And he's Kevin's okay with that. He knows that. Yes, that's why he signed. <laughs> He's never going to be there for yeah. uh, playing for every so game. With, um, I'm, I'm very much enjoying uh, the Chelsea summer because mm. I think it's going to be a bit of a shit show if they get to get a little bit. We're going to sign Frank Lambert. Oh my fucking God. Let's talk about that because obviously Sarri's, Sarri's gone to a better place, Juventus, where he's actually yeah. going to win shit. Actually, to be honest with you, when I saw him like holding the Euro opening if he medal, can, sorry, I actually if, felt If Sarri can't him. contain Kepa, how the fuck is he going to deal with the ego of Ronaldo? That's what I'm fascinated by. Like, that's it. Like, I think a lot of people have been saying that like Sarri is the most un Juventus appointment mm. that you think you could have made outside of maybe Steven Gerrard. Yeah. And even then I think Gerrard might just, just kick Ronaldo down the stairs. But even beside the even beside the point, you have uh, a a coach who has his way and that's it. It's no it's yeah. it's this or go. And especially at the Chelsea team, like that's like they had their way. Uh, you know, they had the Conte way and players were like, you know, were decent, they were good. And then what happened? You had players like Moses just frozen out. Yeah. Christensen just yeah. nothing. Loft his cheek, nothing. Yeah. You know, I think at least with at least with um, with Lampard, if they do get him in, you've now set up your stall. Lampard Lampard's uh, approach to Derby County was to sign a lot of young players on loan, and he made brilliant stuff out of them. He made Mason Mount look like a great number ten. He made Harry Wilson into a monster. Yeah, but so much more than he was in the last few yeah, seasons. Yeah, but it's going to be totally different. At the, Absolutely, the, the it is. Fucking pressure cooker. Yeah, will be Chelsea. You know. But that's the thing now. But now, now you are forced to to put, introduce your new policy. Yeah. And he's not going to be able to sign it, really. No, but that, but that's the point. You're forced to do it. Look at the players that do they can get. Tammy Abraham could could walk into that team as a number nine if they want to. Loftus Cheek will be back. This, we've we've about this before, like the sound that the Chelsea youth team players hear when they leave the academy is the sound of everybody else's youth team players playing for their teams. Yeah. <laughs> it's not... I, I, I don't see... I don't see it happen myself, I but th- it I should think, be. This, this is what they should if do. If Chelsea don't stay where they are, they're going to capitulate. Yeah, it's exactly. Gonna I, I think it's going to be very bad for Lampard myself because, yeah. I, like, like I said, you can't make sense of yeah. of Chelsea. In any other club, when you sign up, when you, if you have a transfer ban, you get some like a club legend like that. It's okay. You know what's going to happen. You're just going to, to hold a pattern and develop players. You've got two years to develop good players, and they do have the facilities to do that. You do have players there they like Mount. They won't do it. They won't do it because it's Chelsea. Yeah. That's what they. That's what they're good at. They're so good guess, at defying all I reckon they're going to drop. I reckon they're going to drop off. Big, yes, big sighting. Exactly. Anyway, um, let's talk about the top two then. Uh, Liverpool um, runners up by one point in a te- in a season where we secured ninety seven points and still could win the Premier League. Like if there's any indication that we are cursed when it comes to the fucking domestic league, that's it. Because Manchester City beat us by one point. Yeah. Um, I it won't say anything fun about the campaign. Yeah. yeah. I say it was. It was fun. It was fun for the neutral. Uh, it's it's difficult because I kind of wanted Liverpool to win it more because I didn't if if City won it I didn't really care. Mm-hmm. Um, you know the domestic. I'm mean, like, it's quite possibly the most unassuming domestic treble I've ever seen. It's a very anticlimactic domestic it? treble. It's like it's, 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 it's like an imposter syndrome in real in real time. It's what I, what I would like, uh, the journalist put it to Pep, like, oh, you could be the the first team to do, or yeah. you're the first team to do the domestic treble, and he's like, hmm, no, it's been done before by the women. Yeah. And he was talking about the Arsenal women. We didn't put it like I think a lot of people have newly started sporting Manchester City women, and yeah. they've obviously been. And they're like, "Oh, we've already done it." Like, no, you false fans. No, yeah. you haven't. <laughs> Fake. And fact, actually, that Arsenal team did the quad. They did yeah. the quad. The first. The yeah. Oh, two thousand and seven. <laughs> the, Ar- the men were in the Champions League final that year as well. Like, and that was well, didn't that it? That could have been. Yeah. Like, great. Such a year for Arsenal's yeah. history. But. At, anyway, the sa- at the same token, um, history. yeah, I mean, to be fair, like we just had a really fucking good season, and the the, the, the curious thing is that there was a lot of like, um, well, first of all, transfer wise, we've been fantastic. Yeah. Like the both selling and buying, both selling and buying, absolutely. Like it, it helps. Like Liverpool is probably the best business model in the Premier League when it comes to buying and selling players. Like the actual system between Klopp, selling Andy Mar- Carroll, just as an example, for thirty five <laughs> million is. That's no, what no, 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 we bought, bought him. For, yeah, no, th- sorry, good, yeah. Compa- good comparison though. Good comparison because 
We bought Andy Carroll for 35 million under a different ownership. Now we're selling players for 35 million and they're not at the level that they would be represented. Like Solanke was for, as I mentioned, 19 million. We're now going to, we might be able to shift Lava for 25 million. Jesus Christ. We might be able to sell Mignolet for 12 for Camacho for 10. Minion, Moreno had a price tag of 10 million. Now he's gone for free, but even still, that's the markup we have on these players. And the reason is the system between Jurgen Klopp, the manager, you have this fucking genius director of football, Michael Edwards. I don't know how he fucking does it. Like, honestly, the man could walk into Brexit negotiations and end the whole fucking thing. If we don't, that's it. That's it. The best Brexit you could possibly get from that. Almost as if having a competent technical director might actually benefit it. Yes. And what, what you what, have... What heresy is this, Neil? And what you have... <laughs> it, and what you have is you have people above that, like John Henry and mm-hmm. the owners, and uh, Peter Moore, actually, I'll give a shout-out uh, yeah, to. Yeah, owners, like owners who like to invest in their clubs and but assets. I'll, I'll throw Peter Moore into that situation as well, right? Former head of EA, by the way. Um... He's done fantastic to get the brand out there and to start negotiating for stuff because the, the, the market in America has expanded massively. You go there every year for pre-season and it's been stuff like that that's been able to get money in every single time. Mm-hmm. And it's not like, you know... We're off there for our pre-season. Yeah. It's going to be in America. Yeah, exactly. And what even there's the money we're dealing with here, like we have a massive kit deal coming up soon with Nike that could be worth a billion Jesus. over those 10 years like that billion pounds like, and that's money that is going in the right areas it's not going into John Henry's pocket it's going into the club yeah. it's going into a brand new fucking training academy where our youth system is now in Kirkby mm-hmm. that's going to be worth potentially 300 million yeah. but that's money that we are getting from our players from selling and buying and all this sort of stuff and that's the right business model and you can see that now in the team we have we're getting as you, I think you actually put it quite well at the start of the season we're no longer getting players that might develop. We're getting the best we can get out there. Yeah. We got Van Dijk, best centre defender. Almost as if you've got a great, a good scouting uh, system might actually work. And you're not advertising for scouts literally <laughs> on fucking Twitter. That is oddly specific, Neil. Who's doing that? Yeah, I fucking wonder. <laughs> Mystery. But no, but, but that's my point. You have, you have, you're getting in the best number six in Fabinho. You're getting the best goalkeeper you can get in Allison. And you're getting the best midget you can get in Shakiri. Like those are the best. Allison, who was kept out of the Roma team for two years by a keeper that we sold to him <laughs> for less than ten fucking million quid. <laughs> fucking hell. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm still, I seem to be striking a nerve here. Well, like I said, even through no, all I'm, that, I'm striking up myself. Even the player, even the fringe players have stepped up over the season. Like yeah. Daniel Sturridge was red hot for like three weeks when everyone else wasn't. Sadio Mane was red hot for a long time and Salah wasn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not as to our normal standard at least. Firmino had a very quiet year. Oh, Salah has been totally anonymous for you. No, I don't think so. I think the difference is that we have a slightly different system of how we play now. We're a lot more efficient. Whereas when we had like, and I think it has a lot to do with the coaching rejig since Buvac left. Buvac was very attack minded and just fucking cavalier, attack, 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 yeah. attack. Which man Pep Linders that was so fun. is a lot more pragmatic. <laughs> and that's the way his teams play. He, wa- he wanted to introduce this 4-5-1 system and didn't really work out. Yeah. Henderson wasn't happy. A lot of people weren't happy. Went back to the 4 3 3 with the little twinges in the system. A lot better. And just pumping out results. Relying on the fact now that you have the, one of the best defences in Europe, even. Mm-hmm. Not even in the league. Now you have that bedrock. You can just keep pumping out results. And that's what we have been doing. A lot of people would say that we had a very... Like, too, bad, too bad City have been doing it better. Well, City have been doing it with style. And you, you kind really, of... I don't yeah. think it's much of a style. It's a real suffocating kind of... It's not even much fun to watch them play. No, not, north, just, not towards the end of the season it's because just it was just inevitable. Yeah. passing. I, mean, I wouldn't even mind, but they've got such wonderful fucking players. Like, mm. I think actually one of my players of the season probably would be Bernardo. Oh, absolutely Bernardo. He was uh, fantastic. Sil- Bernardo he won good. That game between us and Liverpool, yeah. he won single-handedly. Yeah. Bernardo Silva ran one of those, everywhere. He's one of those players that's so talented at football it actually makes you kind of angry. Yeah. <laughs> but he's so underrated in that team though when you look he's at so it. so underrated yeah. in that team because so many he's literally superstars. a player that can kind of do almost everything. Yeah. You kind of reckon if he was like half a foot taller he'd be really good in goal as well. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Probably you. Good and goal as Probably it is. good and goal as it is, yeah. actually, yeah, I have to admit. But yeah, he, it's just, they're signing in, they've got sick ass players. Um, and, you know, it's, it's good and pep, but, you know, you have to admit that they've been playing with the cheat codes on. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Like, there's, it was pre- I thought it was a bit of an inevitable foregone conclusion that they were going to win it. But we really did the, push the them. The fact that's that you what pushed them made it interesting yeah. to yeah. all of us who were like, stopping like, at the, the rest of the what, top. What, what I wonder, I think, I remember Ken Ailey actually brought this up. And he's, he, he was saying that 
you know the Manchester City fans complaining about all the coverage that Liverpool keep getting even though they've done the treble yeah. I was like you should be down on your hands and knees and thanking Liverpool mm-hmm. because they made it interesting they ran it to the world like they yeah. won the league in the last week or so can you imagine if they did what they'd done the previous season and won it with like two months to spare nothing would happen yeah. yeah. it would have been just two months of how they financially doped the league Yeah. they'd have gone fucking taco by the end of it <laughs> nobody was talking about that until it was until Liverpool weren't going to win. And the UEFA stuff had kicked in. And the UEFA well. stuff kicked yeah. in. You imagine if they'd done it two months beforehand. That's all everybody would have been talking about. Yeah. They'd have gone fucking mental. Especially like, I remember watching the FA Cup final a bit and like, once the game was like, wasn't kicked out of touch, they were just talking about how this was too easy for Man City. Yeah. That was the agenda now, was the fact that like, a team like Watford, who really did fucking scratch and claw to get there, maybe had a, l- a lucky draw, you could say that, but they bet teams around the same level and got there by merit. But the problem is that that's a Premier League team who had, by all accounts, had a very good season, but not just not they're not Manchester City, and they yeah. never can the, be. The Manchester last City. time I saw, and uh, <laughs> funnily enough, the last FA Cup final I remember being that lopsided was when we played Villa. Yeah, and we beat them five 0 And that was a very poor Villa side, but they, <laughs> and they, in a way, like they kind of got there because of like yeah. of chance, in a way, because we shit the bed when uh, in that semi final. But uh, no, it's it's tainted for them. I mean, like, they don't care. But well, Pep sure as hell don't. Pep care. really needs to win the Champions League. Just no, that's even all he him. cares about. Yeah. He's obsessed with it. Because he only <laughs> ever well, he's only ever won it twice. Hasn't he? Yeah. And that's with arguably the best team to have ever exist. In the yeah. Bar- that Barcelona squad. And he can't get it around the fact he can't do it anywhere else. He can't do it yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, that's the thing. So I think like so, I get the feeling it's gonna be more of the same next year. Yeah. I think it's gonna be like a fucking yeah. uh, hellacious race. I have no idea who we're gonna sign in the summer. In all, yeah. Because we don't need f- new first team players. Yeah. We now need backup. Yeah, you need the the depth. Yeah. Like you don't necessarily have the depth that. Because we are gonna be fighting like six or seven competitions next year. Mm. You know, like yeah. we're gonna have to go to fuck Qatar for the Club World Cup, which is gonna be fun. And then at, right at, into that, then we will have like some pretty big deal fixtures in a. And you're gonna in be December. Start, you're gonna be starting off in Istanbul with the Super Cup. Yeah. That's gonna be well. That's a nice little uh, tip of the hat, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But and in a way, like we are now, the remit for us now is gonna be different. We, it is now gonna be expected of us to win something every year. Yeah. And Ronnie Whedon put that very, very well during the title celebrations. Kept a very clear head and listen. It was like this: this Champions League win is now the start. Yeah. This is this is your golden age. This is your time to shine. You have to either keep yeah. retain that title. A Liverpool fan about to say this is our year. <laughs> no, but what I say is, it is now no. it is now expected of us no, never to at that. least win. No, because you never do. That's when that's what happens. If you say that phrase, it's like it's, when, off. it's like when English player English fans say it's coming home. It's not going to come home. Mm. We'll say it ironically to jinx you. That's how it works. <laughs> but I mean, his point was, you now have to win something every year. That is your priority, whether it be League Cup, FA Cup, Champions League, Premier League, Community Shield. We'll take fucking anything. But you have to win every something every year. Yeah. That is what's expected of you now, and that's the and that's the issue that Man City has now. We're going to be fighting them on potentially five fronts. Yeah. So um, I think that's, it's going to be more the same. I think next season is going to be more defined by failures than yeah, by success. I think so too. Yeah. Because that's the only thing that's made this season even remotely interesting was how much of a failure a lot of people were. It's yeah. going to be a real shit posting year next year. I think. <laughs> the memes. The, the memes. memes are going to be memes, acceptable. Jack. We have another segment um, that uh, I actually quite like, uh, primarily because of the name of it. It's called Hand of Cod. Yes. Um, I'm also going to, here I will be splicing in sound bites from Eamon Duffy, just so that people get the point. <laughs> cod. No. So, cod. No. No. It's a cod, no, Bill. No, you're wrong, Bill. This fellow Ronaldo is a cod. I don't care no, if he scores. I mean, you can't if he scores, say that. I'm telling you, scores, this was got. a big match. <laughs> if he scores a thousand goals in the Premier League season, to go out and behave himself, in a big match, in a semi-final, the way he behaved himself tonight, right up to the final seconds of the match, he was diving, pretending he was pushed, throwing his hands up in the air, with cutaway shots of him there. He's a disgrace. He's a disgrace to the game. All right, that's putting it too strongly that's all my, together. Hold on a minute. So, this segment, this segment is dedicated to the general incompetency of the football world, where we, all, one of us, all oh, three of us are... callousness. Sure callousness. It is a very wide scope, in fairness. But we basically, basically have to dickheads pick, of yeah. the week. Dickheads Dick. of the week, yeah. Um, we all come forward with one person that got on our week uh, this well, this past fortnight, I guess. And uh, we then decide who is the coddest of them all. Absolutely. So, uh, I'm going to start off, because everyone's getting their notes, um, with a little man called Martin Tyler. <laughs> now, 
I made the very unfortunate decision of watching the Switzerland versus England Nations League match that did really matter because you need to find out who's in third place because if you don't, I mean, no one will ever know. Um, How can you then define first and second? Indeed. Now, the issue with that is um, <laughs> that game was really, really bad. It was really boring. Oh, okay. Nothing much was happening because everyone was tired and wanted to go to bed and also wanted to go on holiday, which I think we can all sympathise with in some yes. level. But Martin Tyler... In his eternal wisdom, to try and basically fill air, because for whatever... The commentary was weird for this game, by the way, because they were going full into, like, national rhetoric. They were really big in up England. I think it's because, like, Sky Sports never really do national games, so they kind of overdo it then with the whole, like, you know, table-thumping rhetoric when they actually do watch England games. And Martin Tyler um, puts forward a question about Trent Alexander-Arnold, who, in my opinion, has had a fantastic season. I mean, we all remember the corner... Against Dead Barcelona, corner, okay, that, yeah. that that tricked essentially the best one of the best teams in the world. Um, it's had a brilliant season, mm-hmm. but he asked the question: Is Trent Alexander Arnold defensively good enough for the England team? What the fuck? Now, granted, his argument was that he was twenty years old, right? But even I think even Gary Neville, you could even see you know that scene in, in Family Guy where like Brian says <laughs> upside down. <laughs> you made you made that statement. No. I think his argument was that he was 20 years old. Yes. Was that any better? No, uh, this is what I'm getting to. <laughs> I think even Gary Neville was looking at him just going like, you what, mate? Yeah. <laughs> just like the biggest ones in Jamie Martin, Vardy. you've gone off your meds again. But you know like how in that, that scene in Family Guy where like yeah. Brian says upside down face by accident and oh, Stevie yeah. just goes, mm-hmm. complete head tilt. Yeah, that with Gary Neville, essentially. Because even Gary Neville went, well, yeah, yeah, he's good enough. <laughs> Like he's just won the Champions League, as a, and that's what Gary, that's what Neville says. Like he won the Champions League, <laughs> and so, and every Liverpool fan immediately hopped on Martin Tyler, and rightfully so, yeah. because I, I think myself and other Liverpool fans have always had the theory that he's a secret Man United fan, and is it even much of a secret? It's not even a. It's secret. not really a secret, I suppose, but uh, it comes out every now and then, and that was one indication of it, because of course he's defensively good enough for the England team. He's keeping fucking. Kyle Walker and Kieran Trippier are out. Uh, who Kyle are, Walker, yeah. Who are, yeah, I know, but they're bigged up as good right backs for England. It's like, well, if he's if he's now in the England side and has just been the best player on the pitch in that I game. I mean, Trippier, who was once, I once actually heard him being described as England's World Cup hero. Yes, he is England's World Cup hero. He scored, the, he scored a free kick. I actually, actually, did Jesus actually, Christ. did actually read that in a paper of record. <laughs> Someone wrote that down and meant it. And it got past an editor. Yes. And a sub editor. <laughs> Uh, so yes, yes. Yeah. my my yeah. domination for card of the week uh, is Martin Tyler Strong for commander. asking a really stupid question. Yeah, that's... Neil, I think you have a fun one for us. I do, I did. I have the AFA, the Argentinian FA, the Argentine FA for their treatment of the women's team. Mentioned how much of a miracle it was that they've actually even acted this, mm-hmm. but I'll delve right into their shall we say hilariously almost Irish attitudes the women yes um, in the run up to the Russian World Cup for the men they published pamphlets and delivered them out on how to pick up Russian women <laughs> <laughs> yes they had saying. they've had a shocking then, then we'll get on to the shocking neglect and outright hostility towards the women's team we pointed out already many clubs in South America charge women to play um, a lot of the Argentine women's players aren't members of the footballers union because they aren't recognised as professionals mm-hmm even though that might be all they do, do. But they can't really be recognised as professionals because the wages that they're given, if any are paid, you can't live on them. Can't live on them. Yes. Uh, one player actually, Macarena Sanchez, actually sued them just to be recognised as a professional. Um, they missed out on the t- after missing out on the twenty fifteen World Cup. They were basically the whole team was just disbanded. Yeah. They were ranked as unranked by FIFA. The head coach was sacked, not replaced. They went on strike as well for demands. Mm-hmm. Their wage demands were whopping eight fifty dollars a day for training and match days, along with disgusting, along with training staff and matches. This was refused. (laughs) That was refused refused minimum wage. And the AFA instead fielded the under twenty threes against Uruguay instead of the women's team. (laughs) And so they've only they've decided to turn the tables and turn their attitudes around by helping out eight players with one year contracts. Mm -hmm. For three hundred and thirty dollars a month. It's a heartwarming story. Yes, <laughs> it's a heartwarming story of misogyny and bigotry, and I fucking just like. And I believe you know, in a similar vein, Rachel. What's your cut of the week? <laughs> my cut of the week are the men 
<laughs> and I'm saying this, like, the generally they are men of Twitter. Yes. Um, complaining about the Women's World Cup. The gammon squad. Um, so one, I just have a tweet here. You asked me to prepare. Yes, please do. Golden I, nuggets. Yes. <laughs> um, gammon nuggets, more like. Should I give his Twitter handle at Andy Pearson sixty eight? Uh, tried to watch women's football emoji. Managed thirty minutes and just being honest, totally bored. Z Z Z Z. Not doubting some have great technical ability. It's just so pedestrian. <laughs> yeah, anybody, anybody who watched the Champions League or Europa League final <laughs> exactly. wouldn't have thought that. Um, well, just uh, just for context, by the way, because I am I'm slightly a newcomer to women's football. Uh, I'm actively trying to give it a go this time with the World Cup and that. Um, I fell asleep during one of the World Cup games in the men's competition. It was yeah. Peru versus Switzerland, and that was a fucking terrible game. Yeah. And also, by the way, on his Twitter handle, I guarantee you that. The sixty nine was actually taken. taken. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so take that, Andy. Full of shit, mate. Uh, in fairness, a Matt Drury four got on to say, "We all know you've said it so many times, Andy. It's so shit. I don't think I'll bother watching my daughter play tomorrow." <laughs> Fucking hell. Uh, then someone else replying there. I actually don't have. I blocked off his Twitter handle because uh, the way I screenshot it. Mm-hmm. But, uh, the media trying to give it the big sell doesn't help. I'm a big fan of grassroots and football for all, but watching the USA whoop whooping as they uh, bet Thailand 13-0 was the end of my interest in it. <laughs> it was like the one game was a landslide victory. <laughs> Holy shit! Like. Um, why shouldn't they, like the question then was legitimately asked, uh, why shouldn't they give it the big sell? It is 50% of the population. It's almost as if they're desperate for people to watch it, endlessly <laughs> plugging it on TV, on radio. I'm sorry, England had the song yeah. We Are Coming Home last year, like top of the charts. I know. Uh, the Thailand game was excruciating to watch. It makes you wonder who Thailand actually bet to get into the finals. And then it, uh, the con- it does continue on with a couple of other people chiming in on this particular mm-hmm. chat with, well, Ireland versus Gibraltar. Yeah. People were expecting and were disappointed not to get double figures mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. of a score in that match. Yeah. Yet it's okay for the women, it's, you know, it's not okay for the women's teams yeah. to beat these teams. And yeah, it was pretty much, that has been, that was just a snippet of uh, the guy refusing to watch his child's football match mm. the next day uh, um, just seemed to be the... The, the golden nugget yeah because it, it is that it is that sort of that, that, that double standards like oh this women's game is terrible I'm not going to help my, my daughter improve that situation at all by just yeah. no look, no take up tennis love there's more money in yeah. that <laughs> you know I, I thought the one I thought you were going to mention was was there not a newspaper that took out a full page ad Yes. Yeah. 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 That's what I thought that was going to come up there as well. I, I just didn't want to give it any more airtime, really, yeah. because I, I know a lot of podcasts have been talking about it. Mm. And um, yeah, no, there's been absolute uproar of how dare the media try and sell men a product. Like, yeah. you know, because it's only men that I, I, you know, the only women, as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> that I've seen complaining about the Women's World Cup have been um, Trump supporting bots. Mm. Yeah. Um, so. Vladimir um, from Rostov. Like, women shouldn't be playing sports unless it involves guns. I love Texas. guns. Hashtag I love Trump. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, that's just like, I know I'm in a Twitter bubble myself, but that seemed to leak through. That, that, that thread of misogyny mm. leaked through. So, um, yeah, that would be my cod of the week. Mm-hmm. Our mm. hand of cod. Yes. But yeah, now we have to decide who wins the hand of cod. Ah, I'll go with the fuck nuts who won't stop goddamn complaining about the fuck fucking women's world cup gamma brigade yeah i i actually be in favor of the gamma brigade as well yeah. because like it's just there's a time and place for everything lads you know like, it's and, it is it, yeah, it, it and is and that good, is and that is when you're dead well not even that right but i'm in a way like a perfect example of this because i watched some of the last world cup and was kind of disappointed with some of the standards because there like there was there was four or five really good teams but now there's like at least ten, I could say they're they're good teams. The standard has improved immensely. We were just watching Italy Brazil there. Italy held their own against Brazil for most of it, Absolutely. and that was a team that's practically was fourth seed in that competition. Maybe yeah. mm-hmm. you know, so like the comp- the the standard is getting better. But to actually to say like we're shoving it down the throats, it's like that's the only way you'll know about it. Yeah, you it, know, if you're looking for an also, alternative. Also, if you want to see throat shoving, wait until the men's World Cup comes around. 
That's throat shoving. Yes. This is not. This is not. This no. is not. And the fact is, if anything, I think the coverage of this World Cup in particular has been absolutely fantastic. Mm-hmm. Especially and in fair, Ireland. Fair play to TG Carr. Yeah. I don't speak a word of Irish, but I do know Ilarna Park means in the middle of the park. And I, Pass I, I, Jazz is a nice pass. I, I learned that cool as <laughs> goal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, it, it, no, I the coverage fair play to RT yeah. T G card like I've I've had. But yeah, the fact RT, is, it's it's comprehensive yeah, coverage. RT, you're RT, able to watch everything. No, so they got good people in. Like they're not getting absolute tools. Yeah. Um. I think. Well, so the group C has just finished six points. All Italy top. Yeah, everyone football. qualifies except for Jamaica. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I hope Jamaica. Because they had gone off the pitch not knowing what the score was. Yes. Yeah. So they hadn't a clue. Hadn't a clue. Going yeah. On. And the top top of the group as yeah. well. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Great stuff, lads. Great stuff. So, uh, yeah. But, like, RT, you've got, like, Emma Byrne in. You know? Yeah. Emma Byrne, they've got the right Louise people Quinn, in. Yeah. Um, they've got Colin Bell there. He's the Ireland uh, met women's, women's coach. Women's manager, yeah. Um, and and he, has actually, is a pr- proper expert in women's. He's not an FEI stooge or anything. Uh, like. We've if got Lisa, to like, uh, oh, God, I think it's, her name's Lisa Fallon, I think. Yeah. Um, she is a UEFA pro coach. Yeah. And she knows her shit. Mm-hmm. And I actually, in fairness, I know I am a women's football sport. I actually didn't know who she was, and I'm sorry. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, she's Classic really good. Fan. The thing is, that, that when you can, when you contrast this with like men's football coverage, we're listening to fucking Jermaine Jenis. <sighs> God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the BBC have Hope Solo and Alex Scott. Yeah. And okay, Hope Solo. Alex Scott is okay. fantastic, though. Isn't Alex anyway, Scott yeah. is like a hero, like Arsenal, mm. obviously yeah. player, and um, but just straight shooting, like she's no, she's no loyalty and no should she? But you that's know? the thing, like that, just the fucking quality, like mm. it's just it's ridiculous. And then yeah. you, you look at who they're getting in the men's coverage, and you go, yeah. "This is garbage. Like, yeah. This is absolute trash." Because like, I mean, top, like yeah. Jermaine Jenis, like what Jermaine Jenis knows about football could be written on the back of a stamp. He still couldn't his head. read. And he still couldn't read it. He should be stuck into his head. Yeah. He should be put into the bin. <laughs> then what you do then yeah. is you cram Mustafi in on top of him. Oh yeah, obviously. Because you right. want to get and the weight down. Oh, yeah. but then they could mate and form some like hard no, 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 right Because after, well, after you put them in, right, then you get them like you, you put on your old really. you put on your old <laughs> shoes, right? And then you stamp them down right, down right down to the bottom of the bin. Yeah, because that's good, because you got rid of genius, Mustafi. Then you drag that bin outside, then you launch the bin into the sun yes and then you destroyed the sun yeah <laughs> okay I, I was I was on board I was on board with you up to that point you know anyway you know what you always stop me at the sun destroying I, yeah you know, you I, always, I have to I have always, to you just, you just take you just it too far cramp my style I know anyway guys so we're going to leave you on that um it's been a long session for us. We'll probably trim it down. Yeah. Because, again, this is what happens when we do podcasts for like a year in between because we have a lot of shit to catch up on and about 20 minutes of Arsenal despair. We should have just had that as, as its own segment, to be honest yeah. with you. But anyway, um, this has been fun. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it if you've ever listened to it because this is a pilot for something else. Um, so, uh, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed that, Jer. See you later. <laughs>